How are you today? It is a uh, quasi nice day today. It's very mild, uh, but a little overcast, but um, a nice day nonetheless. Get to stay in and paint. We're going to be painting our happy Easter bunny. Uh, there's a story behind this little guy. Um, I had a really um, neat idea uh, for something and it kind of parlayed into something else. Anyway, we have not far from our home here, and I do, by not far, I mean by 100 yards, we have miles and miles and miles and miles of walking and hiking trails uh, in the woods out past the village here. And um, this winter, one of our neighbors posted on Facebook in our village Facebook page uh, that they had found um, an obviously much loved little stuffy on one of the walking trails. And they had put him on the parking, the picnic table at the park, just at the entrance to the, uh, the trails. And he, he was super cute, but he, he w was pretty rough looking because he had been pretty well beaten down by being laying out on the trails, but they left him out there. And the photo they posted, I just loved the way the bunny was sort of slumped over. And, um, so I took that photograph and created a couple of sketches and came up with this little guy, the, the bunny that we're painting today. And, um, but I was sort of in a bunny mood this week because I created, I came up with a new, uh, a new design that involves a bunny that's going to get me in a lot of trouble, but it's okay. I can, I've got and big I shoulders. And I love it. And he loves it. <laughs> so anyway, so you keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to have a Halloween piece coming out in the very near future that uh, involves a bunny. <laughs> so, and then uh, I got happy mail this week. Tons. I get tons of happy mail this week. Tons of happy mail. And uh, I got to show you this. This is just freaking ma amazing. Yes. I just love this. We'll get um, a better look on the, the top down. Oh, you going to switch it to the top down? Yeah. I'll okay. You guys got to see this. This is flipping gorgeous. Um, Marion Gagnon, Marnie Mac, uh, sent this to me. It's a pen sleeve. And it's all beaded, hand beaded with sugar skulls. It's absolutely gorgeous. I just love it. Can't thank you enough, Marion. That's such a sweet. I really do appreciate it. It's so thoughtful. And the workmanship is just beautiful. My daughter was absolutely blown away by this. And she's a beater. She loves beads. And she's really impressed with this. Really impressed. And so am I. So thank you very, very much. And uh, I also, <laughs> I know that some of you follow Cheryl Nuccio on, uh, on Facebook. She is an awesome lady. She's so talented with her painted, um, painted fabrics and clothing and shoes and God knows what else. Uh, but did you know that she makes dolls? Anyway, she, um, she made one for me uh, by request. It was a uh, commission from my bestie, from, from Deb Antonick. And you got to see this thing. She's just too freaking cute. Look at this. It's one of Cheryl's uh, monster dolls. And even the monster doll has a doll, a monster doll. Her dress is covered in sugar skulls. And she has the, the skull face. She's just too stinking cute. So she's going to have pride of place in my studio. I just have to find a nice comfy spot for her to sit. So mwah, big hugs, big kisses, and thank yous to my... Uh, partner in crime, Deb Antonick, and to uh, Cheryl Nuccio for this adorable monster doll. It is just too flippin' cute. And Mernie says there is... <laughs> oh, I'm so happy you love it. There's 835 beads. Unbelievable. 835 beads. That's crazy. But the workmanship, Marion, is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. I do really do appreciate it. And it's a great pen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good pen. It's a great pen. So I'm going to put this little girl over here on my table. Awesome. I just love her. She's just flipping amazing. Suiting. It is. She's very suiting. So I have no coffee. You? How did that happen? I don't know. I think I was drinking it while Too I was quickly? setting up. So. Oh. <laughs> I have no tea. Wow. We're both off. <sighs> All right. Oh. Anyway, um, remember, remember we were talking about something was going to go wrong? Yeah. There it is. 
What was it? Your coffee. Your coffee. You were and missing your coffee. Everything else went entirely too smooth this morning. Um, Everything worked when I plugged it in. <laughs> speakers all, or the speakers, the microphones all worked perfectly. The cameras worked perfectly. He made one tiny little color correction. Everything no went entirely too smooth. So <laughs> I said to him, I said, well, something's got to go wrong. So obviously that's it. You have no coffee. I have no tea. <laughs> but what can you do? He can go get coffee later and yeah. I'll get tea and it'll all be good. I'll go get you a tea. Um, what else? Oh, we have our shout out for this week. Yes. Um, we did started doing this last week. Different businesses and, and organizations and sites and whatnot. Last week we had a um, uh, shout out to our friends in Australia. Um, this week my shout out is to uh, a friend. Uh, Maureen Baker. Hello, darling. Uh, Maureen Baker is, uh, she's a hoot and a half. I always love seeing her when I get to a convention. She's just a blast. Anyway, she um, has a wonderful website called Maureen-Baker.com. Uh, she is a deck work distributor. So she has tons and tons and tons of deck work product. She's also a Dynasty brush distributor. So she has oodles of Dynasty brushes on her website. And I believe she has a sale on She's riggers got right now. Sets of riggers. So there's a 10 odd, a zero, a two, a four, and a six in the set. I think it's a six. Anyway, so she's got those, and the sets are $14. Like that's a really great US? price. 14 US. And Maureen is based on the eastern part of the US. So uh, if you're on the eastern half of the country uh, in the States, she's an excellent resource. So please go and check her out. Have a look. And also, while you're on her website, don't forget to go and have a look at her pattern packets. She's an amazing designer, a really, really talented painter. So go and check out her work. She is phenomenal and she's incredibly supportive. So um, please go and check out MaureenBaker.com. Maureen uh, is an awesome lady. I don't know if she's in the chat or not. I don't. She might be watching. Who knows? Oh, who knows? But if you're uh, watching. If you're watching, Maureen, thanks for everything that you do. Really appreciate it. And um of course, if you're looking for supplies, if you're looking for brushes, you're looking for decor product, go and check out MaureenBaker.com. She's got all kinds of really cool stuff in there. Uh, my pal Deb Antonick um, uh, just released that they got a, she got a whole bunch of new stamps in. Oh, my God. Very nice. They're very nice. So <laughs> I got a couple of um, samples. So I'm going to be playing with some of her new stuff. So she's got oodles of goodies in there too. And of course, my girl, Sandy McTeer, she's, her group's been doing amazing things this oh, week. Yeah? Amazing things. So I don't know what she's doing in the studio tomorrow. I don't know if she has a, a Sunday in the studio tomorrow. I, um, I haven't been on social media much this week. It's been a week. It's been a week. It's been a week. Um, I painted this bunny. <laughs> Somebody commented yesterday when I posted the photograph that it's a, a color palette that I don't often play with. You are not wrong. Um, and because it's a color palette I don't often play with, it um, I had a little bit of trouble with it. So I, I had it almost finished on Tuesday and had to repaint it because I hated it. It was just <laughs> awful. Oh, Sandy McTeer says she has a mixed media tutorial tomorrow. Oh, excellent. Excellent. I have not been on social media much this week. I posted my colors and I have posted my thought for the day, but I, I have just been very busy in the studio this week. So I haven't had a whole lot of time for social media, but, um, which She's means that I, I, I've been designing and I've been painting like a mad woman this week. So I can't wait to see you. the bunny, <laughs> the bunny. Yes. The bunny. the bunny. Um, not this bunny, another there's, bunny. There's another, there's another bunny. bunny. She's going to oh. get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> some people aren't gonna like it but i love it yeah well we'll see it could be a lot of fun i think i love him but yeah well <laughs> you know <laughs> it's gonna be it'll be one of those things um this little guy is uh, surprisingly easy to paint once you get the color sorted out i had to get in touch with my pal deb uh, because these colors are more her color palette than mine you know, the pastel -y colors the, you know these soft softy you know pastel. tones i don't really do pastels <laughs> i don't really do easter so <laughs> yeah that's true but um yeah so i called up my pal deb 
uh, because she works with these pastel tones all the time. And she kind of helped me, guided me through which colors I should be shading with because my typical shading colors just, no, didn't work. <laughs> so I, I, I had to turn to one of my pals to get that sorted out. So I finally got it. And uh, then I had to make a few adjustments because to the design because I just wasn't cutting it for me. And for today, um, this is the one we're actually painting right here. This little guy. I think he's cute. It's very slouchy. Whose idea was the bow tie? Or the, the bow? Anyway? There was actually a bow in the uh, photograph of the, oh, yeah? the bear. There's oh, okay. a raggedy looking bow. Um, I had initially used a pink like a coral color for this and didn't yeah. work. So I repainted it, put it in yellow. Um, I had to make a whole bunch of changes because this is not a color palette that I'm entirely comfortable with. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I had to make a lot of changes. But yes, it, he's all done. I'm happy with him now that I've got him. But my big issue was the green. <laughs> How long do we have to wait to see the new amazing bunny that Renee loves? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not painted. We have those initial sketches and the initial line drawing are done. Um, put it this way <laughs> I would get it tattooed on me yeah he would It's uh, that's how much I love this bunny yeah he loves this bunny and I love the idea behind the whole series yeah that, which I'm thinking there may might be a series it may not become a series but <laughs> I think it would make an awesome series well if I get this one painted it'll already be a series because there's two <laughs> that's right it's true so uh, we'll see but it's a lot of fun. Um, I decided... Zombie bunny? No. <laughs> close. <laughs> close. But not a zombie bunny. <laughs> not a zombie bunny, but <laughs> close. Um, this one that we're painting today, I decided that, uh, although I put it on this surface, so you know that I'm always telling you that I frequently paint things three, four times. <laughs> yeah. So, We're gonna paint it again. so far in the last four days, it's been painted four times. Uh, these are the results. These two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I painted it, took a whole bunch of photographs, realized that none of the colors worked. Mostly the shading colors. It just looked dirty and grimy, and I didn't like I didn't like it. Um, <laughs> and so I repainted the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized that the some of the pattern in the eggs and whatnot didn't work. So repainted those. Um, it took her all week. And it took me all week to paint this. Ordinarily, I can do this in a day, but no, not this time around. So that's why it was Friday before the pattern went up. Because even though I had designed this thing on Sunday. Yeah, the day after her previous live. The, yeah, the day after I designed him on Sunday, I had the surface base coated and started painting him on Monday. And then I spent the rest of the week trying to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when I finally got it exactly the way I wanted it, I realized that I hadn't taken any step by steps. Because I had already fixed a whole bunch of stuff. So I had to paint another one to uh, do the step by steps. Could the lady that made the beautiful monster doll duplicate your unpainted bunny for Renee? Oh, that's what? a possibility. <laughs> I'll have to send to Cheryl the photograph, see what she can do oh, with it. Oh, dear God. Is it a sugar skull bunny? No. No, it's not a sugar skull bunny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that in the, the course of deciding this, it'd be fun to uh, show you some alternative surfaces for this one. I painted this one on this uh, rounded corner plaque. This is a surface that I use quite often because I find it very versatile. It's small enough that it works really well under camera and they're not horribly expensive. And so uh, you can do a lot of fun things with them. So that's the reason that I used that surface. However, for today, I took the same design. I moved the lettering a little bit and I put it on a placemat. So um, I thought it'd be fun just is it to a show vinyl? it. No, nope, this is a canvas placemat. Huh? Yep. Um, I took this one, is I believe 11 by 14 and a half, something like that. Anyway. Uh, I'm not saying anything, Jessica. <laughs> what did Jessica say? Uh, she knows. Okay, she knows. She's figured it out. She's figured Good. it out. <laughs> okay. 
So today we are going to uh, put this fun little bunny on a placemat. Um, <laughs> rabid scary bunny. <laughs> well, he's. I don't think he's no, scary. Not, not, not scary. No, he's not scary. He's cute. He is cute. In a but weird, he's in a weird. Yeah, no, kind of weird way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it won't be too long before you... Well, hopefully it won't be too long. This one took a week, so God knows what that one will take. I'm surprised you can even think about painting this design one more time. <laughs> yeah, it's what so, she does. <laughs> it's what I do, and I frequently do that with designs. Repaint them and then paint them again and um, until I get it just the way I want it. And uh, this guy just took me a little longer than it normally does couldn't tell you why other than the fact that it's a color palette that i don't ordinarily work with so um i think that's it <laughs> i think we've covered everything all of my foibles for the week patty jones i'm kind of new to your videos love your interaction with your cameraman can you in introduce him okay no. ladies <laughs> one he has camera aversion syndrome and i well I'm if he can act like camera. a goofball then, then he's okay but um the the deep voice that you hear in the background that is not in front of the camera is my son Renee, <laughs> and uh, he's a bigger goofball than I am. So prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That was Patty Jones. Hi, Patty. Thanks for joining us. If you if you're just joining us for the first time, I know we've had a few people in the last couple of weeks that are joining us for the first time, and um, <laughs> either you know I'm sorry or. <laughs> Or uh, welcome and uh, thanks for joining us. We have a lot of fun here on Saturdays. We do a little bit of painting and uh, we have a lot of laughs. We talk about food. We talk about the weather. We talk about a whole bunch of different things. Um, we paint a lot and um, we have some fun giveaways. Yeah. And we have fun and giveaways. And since you today. just left the comment, you're entered. You're win. already entered in the drawings. So um, the drawings this week were actually, oops, I keep don't hitting do, that microphone. Don't hit the microphone. It's, he's happy with these. I'm still getting used to having it in my grid square, but he's happy with them. Uh, this week, because we're going to be doing some mixed media next week. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're going to be playing with some really fun stuff next week. It's not even a really a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> we're doing mixed media next, next week. week. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to be working with some uh, tissue paper, a little bit of decoupage, some map medium, um, and we're going to do a, a spring theme. I have a, a fun, simple idea, and I think it'll be a blast <laughs> to do. So we're going to be playing with some mixed media next week, which will involve some stamps and some stencils and um, a brayer. Ooh. So we are giving away three brayers this week. Plus the, the uh, yep, yeah. the mini brayers, and uh, and you're also yeah one of the mini brayers. Mm -hmm. I use these all the time. I love you them. Yep, yeah, okay. please, so I can show them what they're getting. Okay, so these are from Ranger. These are a Ranger brayer. Uh, this mini brayer is an awesome, awesome little tool to have in your uh, in your stash, and included in that is going to be a, a one of our new stencils. We've got a bunch of new stencils in, so. There's going to be one of those as well. And the usual uh, odds and sods that we throw in as well. So uh, we are giving away three of these. So make sure that you hit the subscribe brush button if you are on my YouTube channel. And if you're on the Facebook page, hit the like button. Uh, we'd appreciate it. It helps us out, helps us uh, be able to create more content for you. And um, so make sure you... Uh, hit that subscribe button or hit the like button and leave us a comment. Throw in a comment in the comment section. Uh, ask a question if you want to. And uh, just to reiterate, uh, if you're on the YouTube channel um, and you see that super chat button, if you're going to send us a, don a donation through that, mm -hmm. all proceeds go to our local SPCA. Yep. So Feed uh, the fur babies. Feed the fur babies. Okay. All right. I got three brayers in front of me. He's got three brayers in front of you. He's I got control already, of the wheel. <laughs> I already have three, uh, no, not three, 225 names in that wheel. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good, that's a good wheel. That's a good wheel. Um, let's see. see. Curious Minds. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, is, does, did Renee grow his beard back or is he clean shaven? No, the beard is back. The beard is back. And actually, and it's, 
neatly kept. It's very neatly groomed. Really? I haven't touched it in like three weeks. Really? I have not. It looks good. I haven't touched it. <laughs> I haven't trimmed it. I haven't Well, done then it anything. must have just hit that spot where everything just seems to sit in place. Yeah. It actually looks pretty good. I do have to trim the neck, though. Yeah. It's a little, a little scruffy. Yeah, you don't look like an unmade bed, so it's all good. Boom. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to paint? We are ready to paint. Okay. I'll switch cameras. So here's my surface. I've uh, This is um, just a piece of canvasette. Uh, you can use um, almost anything if you want to. Um, I know a lot of places have that. Uh, I forget what that stuff is called. It's blackout fabric. And it's great to paint on. It's wonderful for floor cloths and for... Um, for painting all sorts of things uh this is just a canvas set essentially this is a uh piece of cotton canvas a cotton uh, cotton duck canvas it's been triple primed so it's got primer on one side um i did put a little bit of primer on the back of this because i wanted a little more weight and i will probably put another coat on the back um, before i finish this off then my base color for this was, I've got two coats of jadeite glass, which is that really pretty green. Rocklon? Rocklon, that's the word. Uh, this is that really pretty green, the jadeite glass. I've got two coats of that in the background. And then the background, I, um, I had to stencil it. And because I just, it was kind of black without any pattern back there. So I used a 3-8 polka dot stencil back there, just like so. Um, and a little bit of warm white. You're not going to stencil this fully opaque. That would be boring. <laughs> and so I've got a couple of spots where I haven't put any. So I'm going to, I'm going to line up my stencil with my other polka dots. And I'm just going to lightly, with a little bit of warm white, put in a few dots. I'm not really looking to get them absolutely perfect. I don't want them perfect. I want them kind of you know, broken up and irregular and nice and soft. So just a light touch, not a lot of paint. The brush should be almost dry. You can bring it closer to yourself. There we go. <laughs> closer to yourself. Okay. There you go. It's close enough. <laughs> so we want imperfect almost... and very subtle polka dots. I don't want the perfect. You can almost paint in your lap. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. I, I have it set up so you have. I don't have to reach. <laughs> yeah. Well, you should be. You have a monitor now. That's true. So yeah. But it's, just look as at you that keep reminding me, there's a delay. There we go. So that background should be you know, indistinct, imperfect. They, some are going to be faded right out. Some are going to be bright. You don't want these perfect. And that's just done with a little bit of warm white. <laughs> now, if you have the pattern, you may have noticed that there is a list of stencils in that pattern, the 3 8 polka dot, which we used in the background here. Uh, but I also talked about the crowded polka dot. Um, it's a quarter inch polka dot with a, a quarter inch spacing and it's an m211 is the name of the stencil these ones are optional um, because you might have noticed there's actually designs drawn onto the eggs in the pattern but um, i wasn't necessarily happy with that so i had to do something else so i used the stencils to put these the pattern on uh, and you might have noticed that i whoopsied in the instructions they are numbered from left to right so one, two, three, four, etc. And I got them reversed. So these two are in the wrong place. And, you know, I was not batting a thousand. Uh, oh, JL has got a good question. Okay. Uh, did you have to pre-treat the canvas before painting on it? All I did was just put a couple of coats of gesso on both sides. There you go. That's it. And, and just thin coats. I didn't, they're not heavy duty. Um, it just gives the canvas set a little more weight. If you're working on Rocklon, you don't need to do that at all. Uh, does the dried on paint on the stencil ever flake off? It does, but it, by the time I get it to that point, I will clean them. <laughs> 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 so I've got uh, my base coats in place on this little guy. 
and we're going to walk through that. I've got uh, jade glass for the background. The yellow that I used for the eggs, the stripes, and the bow is this one. It's banana cream. The blue of the bunny is whispering turquoise. Why do I see names appear in the top corner? They're hitting the like button. People are hitting like button. Yeah. So whispering turquoise is the base color for the bunny. The pink in the paws, the nose, and these eggs is cactus flower. <laughs> and then the the purple, there's not a lot of it, but there is a little. Um, in the stripes, and there's an egg back here, and then the stripe down here. That is purple cow or lavender. I couldn't find my lavender, so I had to use <laughs> purple cow. And um, there is some, uh, oh, where is it? Oh, there's a little bit of coral in here in a couple of the stripes on some of the eggs. I just needed a, an extra color um, to add it. But if you don't want to use coral, you could certainly drop it out. But uh, there is my color for that. The inside of these ears and all of the shading on the blue is done with this with open water. And then to deepen that shading on all of the blue is Prussian blue. We're using a very thin Prussian blue for some of the shading and of course it can't be paint anything without a bottle of asphaltum so we have the asphaltum and this is just for toning some of these other colors and then of course we have warm white which we're going to use for some of the pattern on these eggs we're going to use it for highlighting for the lettering and um that's my go-to white is warm white. I tend not to use a lot of titanium white. I find it a little too bright and it's very transparent. So I prefer using the warm white. Ooh, Sandy on the ball today. Oh, is she? Yeah. Miss Sandy, if you, I, I know that she puts a lot of links up and uh, she will also, uh, I hate to use the word police, but she polices <laughs> the, the chat. She is a moderator. She is our moderator. One uh, of five. One of five, yes. And so uh, just to remind people when they're posting is because they're doing this for us. And um, and just to remind you that anybody that doesn't play nice in the sandbox can be removed. <laughs> so <laughs> um, uh, we Don't occasionally get castle. trolls and whatnot in the chat box. Um, and uh, the the moderators that we have are the ones that will eliminate those <laughs> eliminate them yeah we eliminate them so we put the trolls back under their bridge yeah we put the trolls back under the bridge and that I mean, sandy is phenomenal so anytime that um a link is needed she's our johnny on the spot she makes sure yeah. that those links go up she's um, fast with the links she, she's very fast <laughs> faster than i'd be i'd still i it's like those little gifs that people put up you know something happens in a chat somebody throws up a gif and yeah. Yeah, it takes me a week to find one that's appropriate to the subject. <laughs> Sandy's like boom, boom, boom. I yeah. can't do that. Oh, Linda Safranco has got a good question. Okay. Oh, what can you use if you don't have ocean water? Open water? Um, you know what? Salem blue will work. You just need a darker value of the blue. Um let me see what I got here. Salem blue. Desert turquoise will work. And uh, the moderators for our chat are Sandy McTeer, uh, Linda Safranco, Jessica Killeran, Deb Antonek, of course, yep. and Sheila Landry. Yep. So they, they all have the ability and they are authorized to remove inappropriate comments. They are authorized to remove trolls and they are authorized to post links when, uh, when they're needed. So yep. uh, just to remind everybody. That's all. Yep. Okay. So a couple of people had asked about the background color. This is jadeite glass, <laughs> but um, and it's not a common one. I don't think a lot of people are able to find it right now. Leave it to me to find the one color nobody can get. Um, but you could use um, a soft mint green will work. Um, any light shade of green, even light lime would work back there. And if you don't like green, say you wanted to use green for the bunny, just reverse the colors. Use a light value of blue in the background. 
Um, it, that's one of the fun things about this is that it's easy to put a palette together and then rearrange it to suit you. So don't be afraid. So our first step in this is to uh, shade that background. And I chose, well, I didn't choose actually. <laughs> Deb chose this color. Yep. Because she's not not here yet. She needs coffee. No, and, and it's a bit early yet. Um, a bit early for her. Green tree. Not a color I would think to go to. I, I. It's one of those colors I look at it and go, "What the heck is this going to go with?" It's just not a color that I would immediately jump to. And uh, she said, "Oh." Jadeite glass shades really nicely with green tree. I had to go digging to find this because <laughs> I have one bottle. Um, not a color. I, and it was brand new, by the way. When I opened it, still had the shrink wrap on the top. It tells you how often you use pastel I've never colors. used it <laughs> until now. Um, so green tree is the shading color for this. And I got to tell you, she she knew exactly the right color for that. So I'm using a half inch angled shader. You could use a nice big wide one if you're comfortable with it. I like my half inch. Um, I'm painting with a black gold in this case. And I'm going to float around the outside edge of this with that green tree. Well, I got one of our members wondering what the code for the month is. The code uh, for our membership this month? I can't put it on this. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I'll get her name. Yeah. I'm not going to post it publicly because it's for members only. Yeah. Um, uh, Jenna Reynolds. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll get you sorted out, Jenna. We'll get you sorted out, Jenna. So I'm just going around the outside edge. And because of that tape, I'm not really, you know being too neat and tidy don't need to is the m2 stencil sale still available uh no it is had ended on friday and what green this is green tree <laughs> well, the green around the placemat itself is actually, actually painter's, painter's tape, tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she is just creating herself a, a border yeah so I'm just floating around the outside edge of this with green tree. And I use my, my typical neat and tidy method. How do I become a member? You come to the YouTube channel and you click the blue join button. Yeah. Um, if we have found that if you're on a iPhone or an ipad or an ipad sometimes you won't see the blue join button at yeah. all so you might have to go to a laptop or a pc and join mm. through there yeah. but we have a lot of fun yep we have a lot of fun one of our members uh rebecca hamam has been in and out of hospital for the last few weeks and she's finally um uh, feeling better she sent me a message yesterday rebecca i'm glad you're feeling more up to snuff. Sorry to hear that you haven't been well. A lot of people have been unwell the last little while. Uh, Tracy, do you have a paint palette pin? I saw someone with one and I thought it came from you. It did. Uh, the paint palette pins are um, for my members only. I want to wear it on my nurse's badge at work. Oh. <laughs> nice. Uh, my... Uh, painting group members um, when they've been with us for six months they get uh, that little artist palette pin that you saw it it may be the same it may not uh, it's a nice brightly colored little do we have any uh yeah is there some there's of it? one in my little blue dish underneath my is computer there? yeah so but yeah and we we just sent out a bunch more um to our members the little dish underneath my computer monitor. That one's mine. <laughs> that one's yours, of course. <laughs> this one's mine. Um, it's a little artist palette on uh, clear acrylic. 
Yeah. Nice Might bright color. Spring pen. It, it's a fun little pen. Nice little lapel pen. Uh, if they've been with me for a while, it's just a little gift that I sent out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And the other thing we have, those are... <laughs> And then we have these little fun little buttons that we send out as well. Uh, we generally will toss these in some of the orders and, and whatnot. These are just a fun little button that you can pin to your jacket or to your painting badges or your favorite painting shirt. So that green tree, you want to get that green up underneath these eggs. You want the darkest value under those eggs, like so. And then just walk that color out a little bit. Now, what I mean when I say walk that color out a little bit, it means just pull that color down so that it doesn't doesn't have this loop of colors. <laughs> you want to walk it out a bit. Just like under these feet here where I've put that shadow. And then I just sort of blend that color out so that we don't have this odd loop. Yeah, they can't see that. Yeah. Um, substitute for green tree. Um, sour apple. Ooh, there you works. go. That's a lot lighter. It's almost, a, what, two or three values, isn't it? Uh, no, sour apple is very close. Is it? Well, it's a little brighter, actually. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But much, it'll work. Much better. Oh. <laughs> uh, Will you be doing a pin for the one year members? Yes. Ooh, that, that's <laughs> coming up too. Yep. That's right. Yeah, we're going to have something special for that. Yeah. Um, one year members, you you will get a. Uh, You're going to get a special little uh, logo after your name. Yeah. Um, you might notice if you're on the YouTube channel, you might notice that some of the the people on there have little paintbrushes in different colors. Yeah. And some of them have little wrenches. <laughs> and paint wrenches. The ones with the wrenches are our moderators. Um, the ones with uh, pin paint brushes are our members. Yeah. And uh, depending on how long they've been with us, the brushes are different colors. <laughs> yeah. There's a blue brush, a bronze brush, a silver brush, and a gold brush. Yep. And for the one year, you... It changes to an artist palette. Yeah, it turns into a golden, golden brush with a artist palette so that same green that we put along the bottom we're also going to put back here and again you've got to walk that color up a little bit so that that it doesn't look like just a shape like you've traced around these eggs you've got to walk that out Yeah, and the YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com forward slash Tracy Moreau. Yeah. It should be that simple. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to the YouTube channel, it's um, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash oh, no, this, Tracy Moreau Design. That the, takes you to the channel. Oh, is it? Yep. That's my customized link. Ah, yes. So I'm going all the way around this little bunny and around his ears. And again, I am walking that color out a little bit. Robin Wilson has been a member for the beginning and hasn't received her six month pin. Robin Wilson. Okay. Okay. We will we'll get you sorted out. out. There are a couple of people that don't have their names associated with their YouTube accounts. Yeah. And that makes it really hard for us to find you. <laughs> so sometimes we get a few of them that get lost. We don't know who to contact. So there we go. So I've got that green tree all the way around my bunny and underneath my bunny. Not happy with this shadow right here, though. I can never figure out how to comment on YouTube. Um, depends on the device you're using. Yeah. If you're watching on a phone, then there's actually a button that says live chat, but you can't be in full screen mode. Yeah. So 
if you're on a computer, it's fairly straightforward, but if you're not, then it can be a little more complex. Yeah. It depends on the device. Now, I've got a spot down here that I'm not happy with. It was a little too dark in places, so I'm just taking a little bit of water. And I've got a stiff bristle brush. This is like a mezzaluna. It's a dry brush. And I'm just going to scrub a couple of spots because I'm not happy with with the shading. So I'm just going to scrub a few spots just to remove some of the excess color. There we go. I need coffee. Well, I will make you a tea. Oh, aren't you generous? Thank you. Okay, I'm happier with that. It looks a little less garish so we're going to come up to the lettering i like doing this part um, before i paint the lettering because um, it hides a multitude of sins for one thing um, when you go in and paint your lettering but at the same time it gives this soft white lettering a nice little punch so i'm using my same angled shader and the same shading color and i'm going to shade on the background with the darkest value towards the letter with that same color that green tree just like that so that little bit of shading is going to lift this lettering up a little bit and it's going to help that white lettering stand out against that soft background just like so I've got a schmiggly here that's driving me nuts. There we go. Schmiggly is debris or detritus. So, nice little shadow. Always on the right side for this. It just gives this lettering a nice little bit of elevation when we start painting it to have that little bit of shading in there and I also like to take that shadow underneath those little bars like that it'll just help give that lettering a lift I like how this looks it's just now when I took the lettering I had to enlarge it just a little bit about by about 10% um, to fill this space properly the line drawing I didn't really have to do anything with it actually fit quite nicely in there um, if you'll notice there's our line drawing and it just left a nice little gap in here, which actually worked really, really well for us. So the only thing I really had to do was adapt the lettering slightly. And I just made it 10% larger so that um, it didn't get lost in this space. It needed to be a size that was going to um, comfortably fit in that space. So just 10% was all it really needed. And again, I, this is just a piece of canvas set. You can buy these. Uh, most art supply stores will have them. It's a, a pad of canvas, literally, in an 11 by 14 format. And it worked out perfectly for this. And again, I'm just going to go underneath. There we go. So I've got some nice shading in there. Just one more spot. I've got to put a little color. And I think we are good to go. Now I want to deepen this a little bit on that corner because I want to bring this color across a little. I want to uh, kind of set a little bit of a horizon back there in behind those eggs. So I'm just going to float a little of that green in here and create another corner. 
kind of like a tabletop back there. There we go. That works. So now we have all of our shading done. When I take this tape off, um, I'm going to have a line of the, uh, the green all the way around it with no stenciling and no shading. And I'll be able to fold that under and glue it in place to give this a bit more stability and a bit more weight. That's why I taped it off. So we're going to have a nice little placemat. Be cute for the, for the Easter season. So we're going to start with, uh, with these eggs, I'm thinking. And I'm going to use a stencil for some of these eggs because I kind of like the stencil thing. And I'll show you how I did this. Instead of uh, you know, trying to get the absolute perfect and then stencil brush in it, this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab my... Okay. Oh, I was away. There we are. Um, <laughs> I'm on a 60-inch TV. Well, I can't help you with that. <laughs> Could you put a few blades of grass here and there like he's sitting on the lawn? Absolutely. Why not? Why not? I think it'd be cute. So I just placed my stencil in place, and I used a graphite pencil to trace those stars on. There you go. And I'm going to use a little bit of coral, this color here. Uh, are you going to the Pinners Convention? The one in Atlanta? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I would love to. That one's in March, I believe. Do you have to be on a computer to join the membership? It's easier. It's easier? <laughs> um, but certain apps don't work well with YouTube for some reason. Yeah. They're not all up to date or in the same stage. Yeah. Um, like the green on the wood piece with stencil. Did you use what's which stencil did you use around the edge? Around the edge. On this, you mean? Ah, uh, that's per I think those that's are freehand. actually hand painted. Those are <laughs> just freehanded leaves. <laughs> So, sorry. Uh, surface is a canvas placemat. The one that I'm painting on right now is just a piece of canvas set. Uh, the wood surface that I used is the rounded plaque. Um, it is available at Cupboard Distributing. Um, I do have some on my website as well. Accidentally hid Rose Rob. Are you able to let her back into the chat? Ooh, okay. Give me a second. Uh. Rose Rob. Okay. I'll look into it. So the little, um, the little egg back here. I'm going to dry this real quick. Um, it has, you can do it with dip dots, like use the end of your brush to do this. I like to use stencils because I like stencils. So I'm going to, I'm just lining up my stencil so that I can see. And the color that I used over top of that light line is... A little bit of lavender or purple cow like I tis here because I don't have any lavender. I can't find my lavender. And I'm gonna use a small stencil brush for this. And I'm just gonna make sure that I get a few little polka dots on my egg. Perfect. So I have polka dots on my egg. I do, however, want it. There. And this one here, I used a 3-8 polka dot, that nice big dot that I used in the background. Oh, 
which I dropped on the floor, but now I'm going to pick it up. There you go, Rose Rob. You're, you're unhidden now. <laughs> Oops, a daisy. So I like um, polka dots, obviously. They're my favorite. Um, I'm going to grab my chalk pencil for this. Now, you could do this with paint. Just stencil brush these in. Um, but I'm just going to use the um, chalk brush. I'm going to paint in my, my liner dot. There it is. I'm going to paint in the dots on this with a thinned coat, really thin coat of warm white. I don't want these fully opaque. They don't need to be. So I thinned out some warm white. Kind of want them to look chalky. Just like that. All right. I got to go back upstairs and get my mother <laughs> her tea. So there we have our white polka dots. Stencils are handy for that. Just because it's a stencil doesn't mean you have to actually paint with stencil. But... Uh, I like using them just for putting the shapes on, so. And this one back here, I'm going to use that crowded polka dot stencil, which is probably one of my favorites. I really like this crowded polka dot. Ooh, they have tea. So I've got my crowded polka dot stencil, and again, I'm going to use my chalk pencil for this so that I get nice shape. And I'm going to do the same thing with the thinned warm white. And that is um, just paint them in very loosely. This is a super fast way of getting all of these eggs painted. I'm just using the stencil for the shape. I mean, you can by all means use the traced one, but I find this is just really fast and super easy. And then you don't have to trace a whole bunch of things back on. Because I hate doing that. If you watch me at any time, I hate doing that. I hate retracing things. It drives me insane. So I like using my either my shape maker set or I use my stencils to paint in those dots. And again, I've thinned this warm white out. I don't really want them fully opaque. I don't need them to be fully opaque. So there I go. I have white polka dots on my egg back there. And then I've got one more egg over here. I'm going to go back to my 3 8 polka dot for that one. And this is... Let's see if I get this right. All right. There we go. I want um, just a little bit of white back here on this... Is the surface by Canva? No, this one actually is just uh, Art Supply Store. Went and got some Canva set. Canvas Canva set. Pad. Canvas pad. Yep. So it, you don't have to overthink it. This one is just a... As I said, it's 11 by 14. And I'm just painting in those little polka dots again. Just a wash, like really thinned warm white. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. <laughs> so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eggs. Lucinda. Aranda? Yep. Yeah, just uh, received her pouch that Yay. I won last week, and I am happy camper. Oh, excellent. I love getting good stuff in the mail. Thanks, <laughs> Tracy and Renee. Well, you're welcome. I know they've been uh, door prices. So the prices from the uh, the membership class have started arriving. Finally. No, actually, yeah, no, kidding. that's not too bad. It's bad enough. That's two weeks. That's, that's about normal for suppose, postage well, right now. Actually, it's three to five. I had a couple of people yeah, that are it's... missing their orders. Yep. So, not a biggie. They're on their way. So I'm going to dry this and we are ready to start the fun stuff, which is all of the details. I love doing the details, the shading, the highlighting. 
And we're going to start with the bunny. Because <laughs> I love the bunny. So we're going to start with the shading color for this bunny. Which is this, open water. It's a very grayed out, um, deep teal tone. And when I say grayed out, it's... This one reminds me of... Um, <laughs> Uh, uniform blue that's what it reminds me of it's in that same tonal value it's a very gray blue and it does not want to come out of the bottle <laughs> what on brush camera are you it looks using? really bright uh, the brush that I'm using I'm for this for shading I'm using a half inch angled shader oh sorry no that was mid question oh <laughs> what brush are you using to paint the polka dots on the eggs oh that I'm using a number two rigger. This is the brush that I use for doing my lettering. Uh, it's also because it's a flat, right? It has a chisel edge, like a flat brush. It's great for painting in those little spaces. <laughs> Andrea George, I got my order in six days. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's hit and miss. I had a really weird. At a customer in California, got hers in four days. Yeah. And then another customer that's in Maine, which is quite literally three hours from here. Yeah, we could drive it there. We could drive it there, <laughs> and it took two weeks. Like, it just, I don't get it. I mean, me neither. So, I don't know. I mean, because nothing sits here for very long. <laughs> Sue Black, no asphaltum? There is asphaltum. It's coming. It's coming. Toward the end. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> you I know it's going to be there. Uh, dare I ask what color you could use for a girl bunny? Oh, you like a little girl bunny? I think she'd be adorable in pink with white feet. Oh, there you go. Yeah, like a, nice... a pink girl bunny. So what What color? What, what pink? Or yellow. A pink. Oh, a good pink. Um, I would change up some of these, but I tend to go to either... Uh, let me see. Cactus flower is a great pink. I love this one. It's soft and it's still bright. Um, I, this is a great pink. I, which is what I've used here for the paws. Um, but you know what would be really pretty? Uh, vintage pink. I think cotton would be candy? In, cotton candy is a little too white. Too white? Yep. Yeah. Well, it would depend. I mean, yeah, it'd be a little too white, I think. But yeah. a vintage pink would be pretty. And then I wouldn't change the shading color. Um, like from the pink on here, I would use the same one, cinnamon drop. Yeah. It's a nice, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice red for shading pinks. So we're going to shade our little bunny with open water. Now, I very rarely use colorful strength. Um, I do thin it out quite a bit because it gives you a lot more control. I can go back in and put on more. I would love to do on a painted rug. Oh, a floor cloth. Yeah. Have you ever done a class like that? I I have. It's been a long time, but yeah, I have. Floor cloths are um, are beautiful. It, it's a shame they're not as in fashion as they used to be. Now you got them curious. What? What yellow would you use? A yellow? I'm using um, the same one I'm using here, which is um, banana cream. Banana cream? Yep. Sunny day is a little too bright. I had initially painted with sunny day and it was too bright for this color palette. And sunny day is my go-to yellow. You need a very pastel -y. You need a soft... I mean, look at how bright this yellow looks. And it's yeah. actually very creamy yeah. and and white. And it's... Duckwort makes fabulous colors. The one thing they don't have is a really soft yellow. Yeah. No, it's either burn your retinas out or... Yeah, they don't have a really super soft yellow. So the right side of this bunny's face is going to be shaded. You want it darker... Then the left. Look how pretty. I love this. Um, I was actually quite surprised. Open water is not a color I use often. <laughs> um, and so I was rather surprised at how well it worked for this. It burr. It's minus 35 in Winnipeg. <gasps> burr. With the wind chill. Burr. So that darker value is always going to be on the right side of this bunny. Darker colors all on the side because the light source is over here. Lavender bunny? Oh, lavender bunny. I would use lavender. <clears throat> or, oh, what would be a really pretty purple? A lavender colored bunny would be so pretty <laughs> with lilac meadow. There you go. Yeah. And then shade it. 
I would shade him with maybe a little touch of Diox. I need a nice transparent purple, but a little touch of Diox or, oh, there's my lavender. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> lavender would work too. Um, oh, we got a bunch of questions in reference to colors. It's almost like we're going to have a series on on color on color <laughs> in the near future yeah so there is it see how this blue this darker blue works really well i'm putting all of those dark shadows on the right side of this bunny because we need him to be darker on that side <laughs> what is ashfaltum it's a brown it's it, it, actually it, it's a yellow it's a yellow <laughs> Yellow brown. Yellow brown. Yep. Uh, she uses it a lot for shading. I use it for toning. Toning. Um, I and if the color warrants it, I use it for shading, but it's primarily for toning. And she thins it out. So, I love how this this blue, this open water actually over top of this blue takes on sort of a denim tone, a denim tone. I think that's what appeals about it. And it shapes things really nicely. I can't wait to see pictures of all the different colored bunnies everyone's going to paint. I think it's going to be amazing. Not everybody wants a blue bunny. That's okay. Yeah. Pink bunny, lavender bunny, yellow bunny. I'd be fascinated. White bunny. Thing. You a can white do a, bunny? Whi a white bunny. Ooh, shade him with cobalt. Cobalt teal hue. Cobalt teal hue or Bahama blue. And then... Of course, Bahama blue. Yep. I want to see somebody do a black bunny. <laughs> oh, that would be cute. Black bunny, white stitching. Ooh, that's an idea. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> So there I go. I've got some my first little bit of shading on the, the head of the bunny. We need to get nice dark shadows in here. A buttermilk bunny with cotton candy for nose and feet. Oh, yeah. He'd be very soft and delicate. Yeah. I find cotton candy is a little too white. Um, I tend to use it for flesh tones. <laughs> if you do po post pictures of your bunny, yep. tag, yep, tag, tag Trace, in it. Tracy Moreau in it. Yep. Tag her in it. It'd be great. We want to see. We love seeing what you guys do. How about a Dutch bunny? Dutch bunny. Little patches. <gasps> oh, that'd be cute. <laughs> so you notice the stitch line down the middle of his head and down his belly and under his chin got to get that stitch line in and that if you want him to look like he's slouched that line has to change direction so it has an s shape and when you put that line in you notice that these lines all meet and it helps keep that shape of the bunny and that slouch is the change in directions now there's a seam that runs right across the seat of his pants here <laughs> I'm not gonna say it no please don't <laughs> I said seat of his pants so nobody would say it <laughs> sounds like a bunny challenge <laughs> that would be awesome should we make it a challenge and then have Should we officially challenge them to paint different colored, colored bunnies? bunnies? Oh, wouldn't that be fun? I think that's a great idea. Okay, consider it done. Oh, but they have to have some sort of incentive. Oh, an incentive. Hmm. And I think I know what that incentive should be. Oh, what's that? I happen to have a gorgeous, gorgeous little set of Tombow markers. Tombow markers? Uh-huh. So we have a nice Ooh. little set of Tombow markers. There we go. So, oh, no, Janet, that was all you. 
anybody that uh, posts on my page. Yeah. Go ahead and post that on my page of the bunny that you create. Whether it's with a different color or right from the pattern, yeah. we're going to enter you all in the drawing for a set of Tombow markers. There we go. There we go. There's your challenge. Make sure your name is attached to it. Yep. <laughs> Somehow. Yes, absolutely. So I'm just going to go back in and deepen a couple. I adjust shadows as I go. Um, we want this little guy to have... Post and tag hashtag Tracy Moreau. Yep. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. We want to see them. Yep. And we understand if you're a little self-conscious of your painting. You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> Sandy's leaving me messages. You're off screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to go to the calendar and uh, we're going to set a deadline. Oh, we are? We are, Well, we have to. We can't yeah, go Andrea on George just, is there a deadline? I work faster with a deadline. Yep. <laughs> um, let's see. Today is the 12th. Let's make it, how about the last day of February? The 28th. February 28th is the deadline. Okay. So have it posted before noon on February 28th. There we go. And we will we'll put have, a post up with I it. I have to write this down. Yes, you do. <laughs> and we'll put a post up on the Facebook page about that. But I think that that's a great idea. Bunny challenge. Bunny challenge. Page bunnies. Change the color if you want to. But post your bunny on my Facebook page. Bunny challenge. 28th. Noon. Yep, oh. by noon. Yep. Our noon? Noon Eastern. Noon yeah, Eastern? So one o'clock our time. One o'clock our time. Can't just say noon because I live on the, like the East Coast, so East Coast of Canada, so there's a time difference. Yeah. Um, so we're going to say Eastern Standard Time, which is 12 <laughs> noon Eastern U.S. time. So my little bunny is starting to look pretty slouchy. Yeah. I like him. Noon Easter. And Renee again. Howard, my birthday. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> wow, that happened fast and a prize and everything. Yeah. Oh, we have oodle surprises. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we have no shortage. We actually them. still have prizes from the... 12 days of christmas yes we still have we had so much yeah. sent our way so we're we have lots yeah so we have lots of prizes from a lot of the sponsors yeah and uh we had too much to give away for the 12 days of christmas so we just held on to them and, and we're slowly getting rid of them <laughs> <laughs> slowly giving them away yeah. so yeah for this challenge it is a set of tombow markers yeah And Tombo's not actually one of our sponsors. Nope. There we go. They just sent us nice stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I got a. I had placed an order uh, with Tombo for some stuff, and there were some other items included that were not part of that order, so we're using them as Ooh. giveaways. Look at this. He's slouchy. I like Does it have to be this bunny? Oh, I would prefer it be one of my designs. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. So it has to be this bunny, but you don't have to have the eggs. You don't have to have no, the background. No, just do the bunny. You just do be the bunny. creative with it. Be, cre be creative Put with it. Put the bunny in a different pose. Just have some fun with it. Mirror him. Flip him upside down. Have him hanging from a... N no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's bad. So there we go. Have a little fire truck behind them or something like that. Or be creative with be the creative. Bunny. Do something. Okay, so I've got my bunny. Got his colors. Now around his eyes, I'm gonna to switch to a smaller uh, angled shader. I'm switching to a three eighths for this. Around his eyes, we need to have a little shadow. We're going to set those eyeballs back. 
I've base coated the eyes with lamp black and I'm putting like a little C-shaped shadow around his eye. So his eyeball is sort of set in a little bit. I'm going to turn this upside down. I don't worry about getting that color right over top of that black. That's okay. Like so. Because you can take the corner of the brush and clean that up if you need to. There. Where can I go to see if I joined? I don't. If you're on the YouTube channel, no, uh, this go to is your a Facebook message. Oh, Facebook. Yeah. I. Oh, you're talking about the membership group. Yeah. Then you have to go to your YouTube. Log into YouTube. Um, go to your page. Click on uh, purchases, memberships, etc. Mm -hmm. In the top menu, click on that, and it'll tell you whether or not you're a member. If you were doing it for a little boy, what would you replace the bow with? Um, I wouldn't. String. String. A tag. Yeah, a little tag. I put a little string with a tag on it. That would be me. <laughs> It'd be cute with a little pastel heart on the bunny. He would. Yeah. You put a little heart-shaped tag around his neck. Yeah. There's all kinds of fun things you could do. So I've got my shading in place. I'm going to start popping a little highlighting into this little guy. I'm going to use a dry brush for that. Um, I'm using a mezzaluna, uh, but you could use a dome stippler if you want to, whichever you've got on hand. I'm using a mezzaluna, which is this one. Um, I love these. But I like mine really roughed up, so I always open mine up a little bit so it's a little fluffier. <laughs> and pick up a little bit of warm white. Give him a bow tie or just a tie? Just a tie would yeah. be cute. So we're going to start by putting a little bit of dry brush on the top of his belly. Like so. And I think I got a little too much color in mine. There we go. For the bunny challenge, I'm, I I would say any surface you want. Yeah, any surface you want. Yeah. Any color scheme you want. Yeah, change it up. Play a little bit. Get out of your comfort zone. Be fun. So I'm just dry brushing a little highlight of warm white. What if somebody actually made a doll of it? Oh, <gasps> that would be amazing. What's the challenge? The bunny you're seeing? Just paint it. Paint the bunny in any color scheme, on any surface. Post a picture on Tracy Moreau Designs or Tracy Moreau Live? Just Tracy Moreau Live. Yeah, on Facebook. Yep. And you're entered to win a set of Tombow markers. So I'm just using that dry brush of warm white on the ear. Is that side is showing on that part of his head. I just tried to get the pattern and it says your sight is down. Uh oh. Let me check on that. That is not good. <laughs> <laughs> we got everybody wanting to do the challenge and they all rushed yeah, the over. The website is up. The yep. Website is up. Just hit the refresh button. Yeah. And uh, you might notice right at the top it says use secret coupon code. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Secret coupon code. Yep. You never know what it might do. Yep, just refresh the page. It's up. It's running. Yep. If the website ever gets that busy, <laughs> it's time to move out of the basement. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to move the server. <laughs> if it ever gets to that problem, yeah. We're buying a server. <laughs> yeah, <I'm kidding. laughs> and we'll host it ourselves. So I'm putting a little highlight. I love this dry brush thing. You need one on this side too, a little bit. Love the belly. I like that his belly is a little rotund. He's got a little pooch. <laughs> he has a paunch. Yeah, a little paunch. Just too many carrots. <laughs> 
Why? Okay. My monitor's... <laughs> he looks stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> the, poor, the poor guy. He looks like he's just given up. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the thousand yard stare. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't eat another bite. <laughs> there we go. The poor guy. How fun is he? So you can, the thing about dry brushing is that you can do all sorts of, you can be heavy handed with it. You can be fairly subdued with it. I love these mezzalunas. They just, they're great for dry brushing. And yes, Maureen Baker has them. So does uh, the brush guys. They carry them as well. Don't forget that if you're shopping for brushes on the brush guys, use your coupon code, <laughs> Tracy M. How do you get the secret coupon code? You got to read. Yep. You got to yep. read. You got to read. You got to find it. It's right on the, it's on the front page of the website. Yep. It's not really a secret. <laughs> it's... Secret is you have to read. <laughs> it's there. There we go. What brush is that? And This one is a large or a medium mezzaluna. I love this little dry brush. It's really great. <laughs> Just got my pattern. So I've got a little bit of highlighting on this guy. I think he's really cute. He gets softer the more you, you putz with him. Um, and then once you have the highlighting in, this is where you can go back in with a little bit of color and uh, clean up a few edges if it looks a little rough just deepen that shadow in there look at that nice round rotund belly i just love this paunchy belly i think that's what makes him so freaking cute <laughs> i'm surprised the cat wasn't snoring that entire time yeah she's uh oh she's up yeah she's awake yeah, satan <laughs> What you change doing? her name to Satan. There we go. She's gonna stretch. <laughs> She's probably wanna go wanna go upstairs. Oh no. So I'm going to come up here to the eyes on this little guy, and I'm using a small angled shader. I've thinned out some warm white. We're going to put a highlight on this side of the eye with a little bit of paint, Trace. Uh, Connie, the coupon code is one word, capital T-R-A-C-Y, capital M, no spaces. That's probably why it didn't work. The coupon code for? The brush guys. Oh, yeah. So I'm just putting a little float of warm white on the left side. Of course, I putzed that. There we go. Marnie just received her brush and pin. Thank you, Tracy. You're very welcome. And I'm going to float a little highlight on this edge of that eye, just opposite that little shadow that we put in. I want to pop that depth in there. So I'm just putting a little highlight on there. I think he's so cute. Oh, she's coughing. Yeah, poor old girl. And I like to brighten a couple of highlights on the dry brush, just float a little bit of thinned warm white yeah. along the edge. Just cleans things up nicely. No bunny leaves? No bunny leaves. <laughs> <laughs> but this little guy does work up fairly quickly. Um, you would never know that based on how long it took me to get him done this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I usually... How many attempts? Uh, four. Four. Yeah, it took four to get it the way I wanted it. You know, it's just... and then you have to paint it a fifth time. For yep, the... because for you know, yeah, exactly. So, because the first one got painted like three times before I got the color palette right, and then the second one because I forgot to take pictures of the step outs, <laughs> and then I had to paint it again to get it prepped for today. So, yeah. Sometimes I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Oh, Debbie Buckman. Do you sell paper patterns for this bunny? I don't have a printer. Uh, yeah, we can set that up on the on the site. Yeah, we'll yeah. set that up for you. Yeah. 
we usually do is just i was in a bit of a scramble this week trying to get it done yeah <laughs> so we'll get one set up so you can purchase it and yeah. we'll send it off to you And you may have noticed um, on the front page of my website, we have a spot if, when you open up the website. If you just scroll down half an inch, um, you'll see a spot where it says Saturday YouTube Live. And that's generally where we post uh, an image on the website and a link to where you can uh, order the pattern. It's right on the front page of the website. So we try to make it as simple as possible for you to find them. Find what we're painting. So I'm going to step away from the bunny for a moment uh, and we're going to talk about that bow and all of these yellow spaces because we're going to shade all of those at the same time. It's just easier than bouncing around. And I like to do these forward places first. Now the shading color for that yellow is marigold. If you don't have marigold, you can use... Um, oh, what's the name of that color? Um, you can use antique gold or you could use um, deep ochre. That will all work. Um, I'm kind of partial to this marigold. I like the yellow tone. So I'm going to shade all of those little open areas on the bow with that marigold. So Renee had to step out for a minute. So um, if you have questions, he will handle them as soon as he gets back. So I'm just putting a little float into those little textured areas in the center of the... Oh, I got that. Do you ever have that happen where you get a little tiny hair that just does not want to leave you alone? I'm having that issue today. So I'm just going to tap and pull a little texture in the center of my bow. And I want to put a little shadow at the base of that center piece. And then we're going to shade up underneath the top part of the bow. And I want to pull this color down. So you're going to float in here, but then you're going to walk that color down the ribbon a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I want a nice dark shadow up underneath the head of that bow. And then we're going to walk that color down a little bit. Now I'm just using the chisel edge of the brush to do this. Bob's hiding in the egg. Bob is hiding right here. See? Here's Bob. Bob's here. Bob is never too far away. <laughs> now you are going to um, shade this yellow a couple of times to get the depth that we want. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come over to the yellow stripe on this egg and we're going to shade on both ends of that stripe. And you're going to bring it about one third of the width of the egg. <laughs> and then I'll shade on this side as well. <laughs> I think the little rabbit Foo Foo <laughs> is tired of running through the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he does look pretty burnt, doesn't he? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> He's done. He's toast. So the stripes on those eggs, wherever the yellow is, just gets a float of yellow there. And I'm trying very hard to keep this in the shot. And then I'm going to come over to this egg, the one with the coral colored stars on it. And I'm going to float along the bottom of the egg with that marigold and I'm going right over top of that coral because that's going to tone our egg and I'm going to walk that color up a little bit uh oh uh oh uh Karen Jones says mine oh <laughs> <laughs> she Deb already claimed the other one. Oh yeah or one of the others yeah she called it yesterday sent her a picture of it she went mine <laughs> dibs dibs so i've got marigold at the bottom of this egg i've got marigold at either end of 
See what I mean? I've got this little hair here. It's driving me nuts. There. Is it a cat hair? No, it's not. It's I'm not, probably off a sweater or something. It's just. It's either dog hair, cat hair. Too or, short. Or her, her hair. Or my hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not my wrong color for mine. Because it has a color. Hello, no, actually, I actually think it was off a sweater. Michigan. It's... She's then, a Michigander. A Michigander. She's Michiganese. Michiganese. <laughs> so I'm going to come back to this bow and I'm going to deepen that float in here and underneath. And it's a little bit shorter. Remember last time the first float, I pulled it about halfway down that tail of that ribbon. I'm not doing that this time. It's going to be a little bit shorter and deepens that shading. <laughs> Do the same thing here. <laughs> hi ho, hi ho, off to Michael's I go with my Christmas gift cards. Paint brushes, canvas, and papers go. are going in my cart. Somebody got spoiled for Christmas then. Yeah. So I've got uh, my yellow. It's, I'm going to try and zoom in, but she keeps moving it. I keep moving it. So there we go. I think this would be really cute in the center of the table or a run or what have you. Yeah, you could personalize it. It doesn't have to say Happy Easter. You can do whatever your little heart desires. I'm just anxious to see what they create um, color-wise with yeah. this. You know, take the line drawing and then use whatever color palette you want. Yeah. Um, I would just be really curious to see how everybody handles the same design. It's, you know. Uh, bonus points to whoever creates a zombie bunny. <laughs> Zombie bunny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Just because I saw it in the chat so many times, it's somebody, I want to oh, see yeah, somebody talking do about it. The zombie bunnies now. Okay, great. <laughs> so, um, my next, I've got this polka oh, dot. There's a really good technical question. What's that? Uh, you said you use asphaltum for toning. Yes. How is that different from shading? Uh, okay when you're shading you're just changing the value of the color when you're toning you're changing its overall you're changing the color slightly um, people use gray for toning i use asphaltum for toning asphaltum just subdues the color a little bit it doesn't actually change the value of it it just changes the color uh, because i use asphaltum it has a high yellow content so it doesn't technically change the darkness or the value of the color, but it does subdue it. So in a lot of places, they would use a gray or an umber to subdue the color. Um, in the cases of greens, they use reds to subdue greens. I use asphaltum, so it gives everything the same earthy feel, if you know what I mean. Do we, do we have to use paint for the bunny? No, no, absolutely Use what not. Ever, whatever blows media. your hair back. Yeah, i have just, I'd be really curious to see what kind of creativity people use with this design. Yeah, yeah, I just think it'd be cool, it'd be fun. Decoupage. Oh, fabric. Fabric. Decoupage fabric on. Markers, watercolor, spray paint, spray paint. Airbrush. Airbrush. Whatever. <laughs> Have some fun with it. Sharpie. Ink. <laughs> Crayola. Crayola. Crayons. Crayons. Whatever. P colored pencil. Yeah. Whatever you feel comfortable using. Yep. We want to see the different bunnies. Uh, I was thinking that a green bunny with a white with white eyes would be kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would. White eyes on anything is kind of creepy. <laughs> I was actually thinking about doing a, a zombie bunny. <laughs> that would be too much fun. So I'm going to use that same blue that I used for the bunny. You're disqualified, Debbie. No glitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You He's can use kidding. glitter. You, you can use glitter. He just hates glitter. I hate glitter. All. And the so, main reason I hate glitter is because I've had a 
bag of metallic pigment blow up on me onto a gas tank that I was working on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I sneezed into a dish full of gold leaf flakes one time. Filming. Double aught metallic. Oh. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Everywhere. <laughs> yep. And that stuff doesn't come out easy. Oh. So I'm going to dry this, and then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to shade that egg again. I've got one float of that um, open water in there. I want it a little darker because this egg is set back from everything. Don't forget you can art with the Kool-Aid hidden in the back of your cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> you can art with all kinds of things. Steampunk bunny? Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Steampunk bunny would be cool. Yeah. So I've got a little bit of Prussian blue here. I want to deepen this blue back here. I'm going to dry it. And I want to set that egg back quite a bit. And so I wanted to put just a little bit of Prussian blue down in here because I want a darker shadow back there. And But I don't want it everywhere. So it's just in this one little spot and so that egg is now set well back and now that I have that Prussian blue out I want to come in and deepen a couple of shadows on this bunny like under the arm on the ear see this ear flipped over this is it back here so I want to darken that and I want to darken in here too I want a nice dark <laughs> shadow. Oh. Like that. Donna Pulse. Uh, just finished teaching your RAK. Share the love. Ah. With her SDP chapter. Yes. They loved it. I'm glad. Chapters have these really great little classes and whatnot. Um, I have a lot of RAK things. Um, so just to let any, any of you teachers know that if you're going to be teaching for your chapter and you want to use one of those RAK patterns, there are very few requirements. Um, my only requirement really is to make sure that everybody has a copy and that the, the link to the RAK site or the, or the website remains on it. That's all I ask. But you are free to teach those RAK patterns to your chapters. Whenever Tracy says, whatever blows your hair back, I picture her in a red convertible with a scarf around her neck tearing down a coastal highway. <laughs> First of all, I wouldn't be driving. <laughs> no. It's not that she can't drive. I don't. I don't she, like to. She doesn't like to. Mm. Uh, saw a wedding video where the flower girl was tossing glitter. Oh, dear God. Five years later, it's still showing up on members of the... <laughs> Uh huh. That crap done come off. <laughs> Shot at people for less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, and on that note, and on that note, um, there. So I've taken a little bit of that Prussian blue and just darkened a few little shadows uh, that I wanted a little deeper. And it, it does two things. It crisps up little details like these areas here where the legs connect. And it just gives him a little more depth and a little more shape. I like that. And it's very thin. I always heavily thin these colors. There we go. What is that? Does the bunny get a mouth? He will. Yeah, he will get a he mouth. He has a mouth. It's right down there. <laughs> Thunder. So we've got, uh, now that we've got the, the blue done, I want to come here to this blue stripe. And we're going to use that same bit of blue, same way we shaded the yellow. We're going to do it with the blue. <laughs> Shopping at Michael's with Tracy. We used to have so much fun. Oh, that was Karen Jones. <laughs> Yay, Karen! Go into a Hobby Lobby with me and Deb. Uh-oh. If you want an adventure. Just be prepared to stay a while. 
Got her on. <laughs> Lucy D. Matt. So I'm going to do the same thing to this blue stripe on this egg here. I like that blue. This just separates and sets that egg in behind when you have those shadows on either side. So we've got shadows on our striped egg. Oh. How about we take a little break and spin the wheel? That's a good idea. All right, I gotta switch cameras here. So, so, so one of our new stencils. Doo -doo -doo. And I'm thinking it's gonna be a paw print. Paw print stencil? Paw print stencil. Just because we've got... And I like yeah. that one because it's got a little heart shape in the paw. <laughs> <laughs> You're stinking cute. Give me one second. I got to... No, where am da, I? Da, da, da. I had one, but I don't know where it went. Okay. I got to move this a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's off camera a little bit. There we go. Let's put her over here. So you can still see her and see the wheel. <laughs> There we go. Oh my god, the hair. Battleship gray. <laughs> it was better than purple. Yeah. All right. We got a bunch of names in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is it ever crowded? Oh yeah, there's uh, 236 names in there. Wow. We're spinning. Okay. Oh, look at all of the little... Oh, that's so neat. Little hearts and fig oh, here we go knocking them. I gotta smash <laughs> Smack that things. thing one of these days. Burn burner. Burn burner is getting a brayer. Burn burner. Uh, Lois Ann, I will use glaze or water, whichever you happen to have on hand. I tend to go to the glaze all the time. That's just my go-to. I like the way it makes the color transparent. So we got Burn Burner is our first winner. Yeah. Want to do another? Yep, one more. Sure. All right. Spinny spinny. Because <laughs> this is, is really coming together very quickly, so. Is it? Yeah. Well, we don't have a whole lot left to do, so. Who else is getting a brayer? And away it goes. Sally Chloe. I Kleber. Kleber? Sally Kleber. Sally Kleber. Okay. Excellent. All right, all so right. um, both you ladies, make sure that you go to the front page of my website, click on the little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner and send us your shipping information. And we will be more than happy to get your little brayer and your stencil and the other little goodies that we often throw in will come your way. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also have a new uh, mini stencil for you guys um, starting this week, I believe. And it is a uh, fleur-de-lis because you know what's coming up. So all of my pals in Louisiana. Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. So all my pals in Louisiana, um, just for you, this new little uh, freebie, the minis that we have. I don't know if any of you collect these, but I love them. I just think they're fun. Um, we had stars last month and we had snowflakes. And this month we have this just for Mardi Gras in time for Mardi Gras, oh, which is... Yeah, I gotta switch cameras. Okay. Good idea. Oh. So just in time for Mardi Gras, we have this really pretty little um, fleur-de-lis stencil. For our pals in Louisiana for Mardi Gras. And uh, this is what I do with mine. If you've got a paper punch, little hole punch, these stencils are really handy. I just keep them all. Um, every time somebody places an order on our website, we send out a little thank you card and one of these minis. So um, we've had flowers, we've had stars, we have snowflakes, we've had bunnies <laughs> for Easter. Uh, Fleur de Lis. You don't have a paw. You haven't showed them the paw stencil. And, uh, yeah, I'll show you the little paw print stencil that they're getting. I'm pretty sure you... Yep. So this is the new paw print stencil. If you're a pet lover, I love this stencil. I just think it's super cute. The little heart-shaped paw and the little toes. Um, 
So yeah, so one of these plus your brayer and some other little goodies that we send out with the uh, stencil orders are going out to Burn Burner and to Sally. And we still have one more to give away and we'll do that one in a little while. Yeah. Let me close up. Oh, so they get a stencil and a brayer? Yeah. Oh, okay. Going to get a stencil and a brayer and the usual little goodies that we send out. And please, when you're sending me information or a question, please do it through the website and not through Messenger on Facebook because uh, I have four Facebook pages that are associated with the one account. I am not on social media very often these days, and so I frequently miss questions and, and whatnot on there. So if you have concern about an order or a question about a project or a pattern or just have a question or want to say hi, um, please do it through the little speech bubble on the front page of the website because those come directly to me. They don't go to the, the orders section mm -hmm. of the website or the customer service section. They come right to me. So uh, anytime you have a problem or a question, that's what you do. Do you have a St. Pat's Day design coming up? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't often do anything for St. Patty's Day. There will probably be a freebie. Yeah. Yeah, there will probably be a freebie. A little shamrock. A little, well, maybe. And shamrock Maybe. stencil? Um, we do have, I think I did one a couple of years ago. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. I can't remember if you did a shamrock or not. I don't think so. You should. I have. Just say. Yeah, I should. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can try to do that. <laughs> yeah. But I like those little minis. I just keep them, punch a little hole in them and keep them on a ring, a little jump ring. They're handy. What brand is your glaze? I use a Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze. See, put on my bottle. That's not good. Uh, that looked like a decorware bottle. Uh, that was a. Ah, this is the one that I use. I use the Joe Sonia Fast Dry Glaze Medium. And I use it for everything. Uh, Day of the Dead Bunny? Oh! Day of the Dead Bunny. If you make it, <laughs> it will come. <laughs> it will happen. So I've got uh, my bunny shaded, got my first shading in there. Um, let's go to uh, these little green eggs, the ones on either end. The oh. shading color. Kathy Gunther just said, I have your shamrock mini stencil that you did okay. give Okay, I don't have one on my ring. I may have okay. taken too long to put one aside for myself. So, oh, I, yeah, it was probably last year. Yeah, or the year before. Or the year before. No, it would, have, it would have to have been last year because you started doing that last year. Uh, I've done that at shows to the little minis oh okay yeah so i might have done that at vegas one year uh don lavelle it would be on tracy Merle live facebook yeah that's where you will post your your bunny yeah so i'm shading this light lime egg with the same green that we used in the background and underneath And so I'm just going to shade my egg. I'm trying to keep it in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to put one on and then I'm going to dry it and do it one more time. It's not quite dark enough. I want it to come back a little bit. And this green egg over here is going to get the same treatment. There we go. Will the voodoo bunny be in the Mardi Gras parade? <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be somehow appropriate. Yeah, it would be very appropriate. <laughs> so this little uh, white polka dotted egg back here is getting that treatment as well. It's got white polka dots on it. So there is our green. Let me give it a second to dry. And then I'll deepen it. And then we have to do the same thing to those green stripes on our striped eggs. Uh, will you be going to Las Vegas this year? I am not. Um, we decided to wait on submissions for most conventions this year. Just because things were not at all... 
Um, not at all stable enough for us here um, because we've still had a lot of restrictions and we're still under a fair amount of restrictions. Um, it was making diff uh, travel very difficult and very expensive. So I thought, well, we'll just leave it for this year and we'll consider it for next year. So I'm going to put, again, the same shadow, same width as the other colors, about one third of the way. Bring it down. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Does anyone else miss yelling out no sound? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd fix it. <laughs> took us a while, but we got it fixed. Yeah. It took a uh, whole new microphones. Yeah. Um, what I think what was happening was because we were using the high quality audio and high quality video at the same time from the cameras. Yeah. They were overheating. Yeah. So that's what. I think was causing them to cut out. Now that we have standalone microphones and they're high quality microphones, yep. we good. <laughs> we got microphones and cameras all over the place in here. So I'm going to, this is where we get into some fun because we've only got two more colors to shade. Um, we're going to shade these pink eggs, the feet, the nose, and the stripes. And we're going to use cinnamon drop. It's an in-your-face red, but it's also a very transparent one. So let me show you something. Um, a color that I particularly like for shading this pink is Watermelon Slice. Do you think I can find a bottle of that? No. Uh, but it actually works very, very well for shading um, this pink, that cactus flower. Um, I cannot find any, and I try to avoid colors that have been discontinued. So I'm using a, a cinnamon drop for this. It's a very transparent red, so I'm not using it full strength, so I'm thinning it out quite a bit. And I want to put a nice little shadow on the bottom part of the nose and mm. up the right side, like so. I don't think uh, she's allowed to mention anything for the 50th anniversary for the SDP in August. Uh I don't not, know if she... I'm not involved in that. No? No. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Nope. I thought she was. I thought she had something for SDP coming. No, nope, I don't. Oh, it's the other one. Yeah. It's the other one that we keep shush. <laughs> So I'm just putting a little float right. to the bottom right. Check on poppers. Of all of the pink. Like so. I love this cinnamon drop. It is a blue red. It's got a high amount of blue in it. Leans towards the blue on the color wheel. It is a very, very transparent red very transparent and it looks really great over top of pinks it gives you that nice rich tone which I, it's just it's lovely over top of pinks but you have to thin it out so and then i do the nose i like the nose to have a fair amount of pink but don't be afraid to take a little of that red to put the halfway mark at the top of the nose. Because we're going to have a highlight in there. So don't be afraid to put that, make that a fairly aggressive float. It's not going to hurt anything, so don't worry about it. So there is that nice little shadow. I love how that pink just pops. Now I'm going to shade both the coral and that pink at the same time with the same color. Remember that coral bit that's at the top of this? I'm going to shade that pink and the coral with that cinnamon drop. Works really well. And do the same thing at the bottom because this is coral down here. And then I'll do that here. 
And again, I try to keep it darkest on one side and only come about one third of the way across. Look how pretty. So now we have this stripe and this egg to shade. I'm going to, I love this red on this pink, it's so pretty. I know my pal Deb has got something coming up with uh, Artful Webinar. Um, so if you're part of that group at Artful Webinars, you might want to check that out. She's got a, a really cute little piece coming up um, with her stamp and doodle techniques that are really cool. There we go. I love, 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 love how that looks. So I've got all my pinks shaded. I think I might pull this pink up a little bit on this side. There we go. It just needed a little darkening there. So fun. And then we only have the purple remaining that needs to be shaded. So we've got it in three places. We have it here, this stripe on this striped egg. There is a number seven egg or eight, seven, six egg in behind the ears here that is base coated with that purple. And we're going to shade that and then the stripe down here. So we've got lavender as the base coat or I believe it's uh, purple cow is what I ended up using. Um, I'm shading with a little bit of plum and again I've thinned this color out quite a bit because it is a strong color so shaded that and then I'm going to shade that egg in behind the ear the nice part is I can clean up a couple of little goofs that I've made so there's a nice little shading and finish shading that stripe back there. And there is our purples. Okay. Yeah. So we have a lot of our shading done. I'm going to dry this and now we're going to start toning this. Um, this is where I get to clean up a few little things. It sharpens a few edges it gives us a little bit more definition and it subdues these colors just a bit and i use a shfaltum for that so i make sure this is good and dry so a shfaltum i'm going to use a half inch angle for this and the asphaltum, let me clean up a little bit here. Just want to tidy up my space because I have uh, got bottles everywhere, paint bottles everywhere. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to clear my palette so that we can talk about toning. A little bit more in depth. A little more in depth. Put that over there. Does anyone else wish manufacturers would put a T or an O designation on paint labels for transparent or opaque? Um, I do and I don't. Um, I do. It would make things a lot more convenient. Uh, however, um, having worked in product development for the last few years, I can tell you that when it comes to putting anything on the label of a bottle of paint, it's like moving mountains. Um, there are so many things that are required by law to go on this bottle. Let me show you. Just, I'll deviate for a second here. First of all, the instructions. They have to be on there in a certain number of languages because they are being shipped all over the world. So if you can imagine, just the instructions alone take up a third of that label space. Another third of the label space is taken up by UPC codes, which are also required. 
the and by law the uh, address of the place and then this these ASTMs and ACMI and AP, these have to conform to all of these rules. Those must be in place. Then there's the size, the format. And of course, because it's shipped internationally, it has to have both fluid ounces, standard and metric, plus the company name, the line name, plus again, everything is in three or four languages. And then <laughs> the name of the color, plus it's got the lot number on there. So finding a, a reasonable spot to put that type of information is not always the easiest thing. And the more that goes on these labels, the more expensive those labels become. So a simple designation, I think, would be really, really handy. However, if you go to DecoArt's website at decoart.com and you click on products in the top menu, and then from when you get to the products, you click on resources or click on any specific product like Americana acrylic, pull that up, go down to the resources section on that page and you'll be able to download the opacity charts for the Decord Americana line. And it will give you a listing of which colors are opaque, transparent or semi-transparent. So there is a color guide. And there is a color guide. Make it even simpler. <laughs> Go to the free educational material section <laughs> on my website. And you'll be able to find that opacity chart there as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to start toning this. We're going to do that with a little bit of a schvaltum. I didn't even mention food, and they're already talking about food. Well, because you, well, you usually do Yeah. at some point. Zucchini relish tartar sauce. Ooh. Sounds interesting. Need a recipe. Mm-hmm zucchini relish tartar sauce we are having smoked pulled pork for supper yes that's what we're having for supper this evening um through the summer i buy whole legs pork and we big smoke it. chunks and, and <clears throat> you put it in the smoker and then shred it all put it into separate ziploc bags portion control and put it in the freezer <laughs> portion control <laughs> i know i use the term loosely <laughs> so i'm going to pick up a really tiny amount of asphaltum. Let me pull this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Small amount. So this is what it would look like straight. And you're going to blend this until it is very transparent. We do not want a ton of color in this brush. And this is where we're going to go into all of these shading places. And you can see it tones that color. It doesn't drastically change it or make it super dark, but it does tone that color. <laughs> Makes it a bit more earthy. I just wish they'd make the letters on shampoo bottles bigger. Uh, yeah, because your glasses get all fogged up in the shower. That's... <laughs> I buy the same brand of shampoo all the time because then I already know what I have to do to wash my hair and I don't need to read the bloody instructions. Yeah, but now you're protected from flea and tick. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's like taking the wrong medication. I you know. Good news. I don't have heartworms. Uh, yep. I don't have to worry about heartworm or ticks. <laughs> Fleas. <laughs> so... All I do is any place that's been shaded, I just go in with that thin dash faltum. Have you even touched your tea? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. It's a very good one, I might add. I didn't make it. I know. <laughs> it's a very good one, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> I made you a tea. <laughs> this isn't tea. You're right. It's coffee. <laughs> it's the best you can do. <laughs> Mm -mm. That was just enough coffee for me. Yeah. Until after dinner. Okay. Oops. Oops. A little too heavy. Why doesn't he have a belly button? He doesn't need a belly button. I think it would be cute if he had a belly button. Um, you have a belly button. <laughs> it's not cute. So this is your opportunity to, as I said, I like using this to tone it. It doesn't drastically change the color. Um, 
but it changes the tone of the color, if that makes any sense. It makes it look a little more earthy, a little less cold, um, for, especially for blues. I really like asphaltum over top of blues. It gives a, uh, I don't know, a subtle greenish cast, I guess. It would be the... I guess I'm going over to Mernie's place. Are you? What's she making for supper? Uh, she's got nachos, home-cooked chicken wings for Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow. Oh, oh right. There's a football game tomorrow. Yeah. It's also <laughs> Valentine's Day. Monday is Valentine's Day. Today's the 12th. So it is. <laughs> Monday is Valentine's Day. So any place that you've put a little shading, put a little bit of that asphaltum in there. It just, I don't know, just gives things a nice little shape. <laughs> Deepens colors. Oh, excuse me. And it's a super easy way to just balance oh. things. I don't watch Super Bowl. I just like the food. Yeah. <laughs> We're not really big football fans up here. No, no. We are Canadian after all. However, <laughs> just saying, uh -huh. U.S. hockey team's not looking too good this year. Really? They beat the Canadians last night. What? <laughs> See how much I pay attention to sports. <laughs> yep. That is not good. Well, you know what? It was our first loss. Okay. You know yeah. what? I, I, if it's our first loss. It, yeah. I mean, they're all NHL players anyway. Yeah, that's true. So. None of them is going to miss the paycheck, you know? <laughs> Just 85% of the Canadian team are captains on American teams. <laughs> <laughs> Painful. So I'm just going to deepen a little bit. Here we are. So this little guy's coming along quite nicely. I'm just going to come underneath his chin there. I like it. Ted's Range Road Diner op is open tomorrow. Okay. But the Canadian women's team have not lost a game. That's true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Okay, so I have put a float of asphaltum on top of all of my major floats and shading, including the nose and the toes. No NHL players this year? What? That could be. I don't know. There's no NHL players this year? Wowzers. Wow. So I've got a little bit of asphaltum. I'm going to come up here and finish this bow. And I'm going to do that with a little, slightly stronger float of asphaltum in the bow just a little bit stronger i want a darker shadow underneath this is going to help separate those various elements a little bit and it's also going to let me deepen the details in this bow and i'm just touching like so Wow. What? Did not know that. What's that? The NHL said they couldn't play in the Olympics. Oh, wow. Tells you how much attention I've paid to the Olympics in general. <laughs> None. Wow. I didn't know that. So I've got my shading in place. Now we're going to start putting some highlights in. And this is the fun part because this, this kind of just adds all of the goodies and all of the light. <laughs> no current NHL players. Yeah. <laughs> They're future NHL players. <laughs> you walk away with a gold, you have a contract with the NHL. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, so highlights. 
I'm going to, this is warm white. I'm going to put a float of warm white on my egg. Just like that. I'm coming in slightly from the edge of the egg say by eighth of an inch and I'm just putting a float of warm white on my egg. Come so. COVID restrictions by China are long. Yeah, actually they are. Um, my best friend, uh, his girlfriend is originally from China and she's a university student that ha is working on her master's degree in biotechnologies. And she actually had to go home for family reasons. Yeah. And it took her three weeks to finally get to her parents' place. Yeah. She entered China and three weeks somehow from landing in Beijing to getting to her, her parents' place took her three weeks to get there. Yeah. Due to COVID restrictions. Because of how they have COVID restrictions set up. Yeah. So. so Sean, if you're watching. Hi, buddy. I've got my highlights. This is just a little thin warm white. Thank goodness this is fabric. <laughs> I can bend it a little bit. Um, I've thinned this out. I don't want this full strength. But I want a nice little highlight on the upper left part of the nose. I've done the same thing to the feet and the toes. Toe beans. Toe beans, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all of those highlights are just thinned warm white and it's just a float. Neatness doesn't count. Come sa. So we've got fun little highlights in. And now I'm going to take my rigger I'm using a number two and we're just going to add a few. Oh, for heaven's sake, Tracy, wakey, wakey. I forgot. I started all this to do the bow and then forgot to do the bow. Okay. So let's float that bow. Good Lord. So a little bit of warm white and I'm taking that float again. I'm coming in from the edge just slightly. So that highlight is on the points of those bows. Uh, did uh, Tracy already say where she got the canvas placemat from? This is actually from a canvas pad, an artist's pad. Hmm. They have them at Michael's. You can get them. Hmm. So a highlight on the bow, white at the outside edge. And in between all of that shading, it's just a little highlight. Look, little stroke of white. I'm up on the point of the brush for that. So this is not a neat and tidy thing. We want this boost bow to be rather loose. There we go. So I'm going to grab my rigger and this is where we put in all of those final little strokes. I'm using um, warm white and I've thinned it out quite a bit. And I'm <laughs> going to put a stroke like that on the egg. <laughs> I have never heard of such a thing. Canvas pad. Dang. Off to Michael's. <laughs> so this is just a stroke for that final little highlight on those eggs. Just like that. Boom. And you can do the same thing to the to that bow. Don't be afraid to just pop in a few little textured details like so. So dry brushed highlights and hard highlights. And... Yep. This is what's called a light impact point. Yep. So a little stroke on the nose. And you're going to do the same thing to the feet. Little stroke. And the beans. On the beans. 
because bunny feet are cute. Not as cute as bunny bums, but bunny feet are cute. You want a big surprise? Pull on a tail. <laughs> pull the tail of a rabbit. <laughs> it will blow your mind. It's actually curled. Yep. <laughs> curled back underneath their body and all you see is the tip of the tail yeah if you give yeah. it a just be gentle obviously yeah. <laughs> give it a light pull and you'll see it stretches out like three four inches <laughs> it is weird there we go now don't forget you got to do the eyes too <laughs> are the edges taped yes yes they are <laughs> so i'm going to dry this and then when this is completely dry is when I take out my favorite eraser, my Factus black eraser. Just to clean up any little, you know, those graphite lines and whatnot. <laughs> and I think Tra I think these stores should start paying Tracy for her advertising. <laughs> I agree. So you can just take your favorite eraser and remove all of those graphite lines that are still showing. I like this Factus Black because it doesn't hurt the paint and it doesn't leave you with shiny spots everywhere. And then I've got a quick little thing I'm going to show you. So he has stitches. And that's where this comes in because I love this. This, I like taking my my little uniball signo and I put a light sketchy line on him and then on that center line on his face I put tiny little lines like this for stitches and remember his mouth we've got a little stitches that go here and then you're going to take again that little sketchy line I don't want it hard I don't want a hard edge that's why I use that sketchy so that it's just light and a little textured so that he stays fuzzy looking i don't want him to be he's not a coloring book character i want him to look soft that's why those little sketchy lines are not perfect i know do it with a domestic rabbit yeah not a wild one <laughs> First of all, good luck catching one. Yeah. And do it with a rabbit that is comfortable with being handled. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, bunny bites suck. Yeah, and they can bite too. Yeah, and they can bite. Yeah. I used to work in a pet shop, so. He also worked animal control, so. I've <laughs> dealt with deer. I've dealt with raccoons, squirrels, <laughs> rabbits. Horses, cows, pigs, goats, sheep. I would have paid money to see you handle horses, though. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> they, they scare me. Yeah. Uh, but cows I'm fine with. Yeah, cows yeah. are wonderful. I yeah. love cows. Pigs are a pain in the butt. They're stubborn. Yeah. Especially if they don't want to move. Yep. Uh, sheep are easy. Go here. Okay. <laughs> 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 goats are playful can be <laughs> uh dogs cats uh snakes i love handling snakes they, they're, they're just cool so i like that you know i anybody that follows me knows that i use these uniball signos a lot i just i like how they look i find that you can clean up and add more texture to things with these. And again, I like a more sketchy line, not a perfect line. Perfect lines are boring. If you're more comfortable doing this with a liner brush, go right ahead. <laughs> if it has teeth, it can bite. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Yep. So if at any time, you know, if you want to outline all of it, go right ahead. I don't always. I just like that sketchy look. <laughs> what other Same tails have you pulled? 
Uh, Be very careful with that one. We want to maintain our PG rating. <laughs> I wasn't going that way. I was actually going with animals here. Like I said, <laughs> want to maintain that PG rating. Yeah. Uh, so that little uniball signo is a handy little pen. Because it's super fine and the ink is really very black, it is a Japanese ink. And I love how this looks. It's just... You can clean up a whole bunch of little things that might bug you or and it just gives everything a nice little finish yeah i've had to work with snakes snakes don't bother me big bugs on the other hand do bugs yeah spitters no thank you tarantulas nope uh giant cockroaches nope. Lizard, well cockroaches don't bug me they're just yeah. disgusting but they don't bother me as much as long as I know they're there, I'm okay. It's when I'm surprised. Don't uh, like being surprised. Bearded dragons, iguana, different types of pythons, boas. So we're almost finished with this little guy. We're going to talk about the lettering here in a second. And then finish off. I want to do the lettering, then we'll finish this off. Because we're going to talk about um, some stroke work. Not that I do a ton of stroke work, but um, for this particular one, it behooves me to talk about it for a little bit. <laughs> spiders, yuck. Ew. Yeah. No, thank you. Nope. Nope, I don't do spiders. If they're behind glass, I can look at them all day. I don't even want to be in the same building with them. Do you spray it this when you're done? Yes. Um out of habit, I spray everything when I'm using ink simply because you never know how it's going to react when it comes in contact to varnish or even water. So everything that I paint um, goes out to the garage and gets up psh, psh, with the uh, Decor matte spray. <laughs> because I don't like um, unprotected pieces. They tend to get damaged really easily. I don't like that. But... Um, and I do like the matte spray because for photography, it makes, you know, nice finish, but it protects the piece at the same time. So almost there. I want to finish that little line. I like that little sketchy line. It's simple and it looks nice. Yes, I've had to work with reindeer. <laughs> reindeer, um, mule deer, which are stanky creatures. Yeah. And Whitetail. And Renee's worked on movie sets with animals too, with dogs. There we go. All right. So our bunny is complete. I like this little uh, little guy. I think he's cute. Um, if you have the pattern, you'll notice there's a photograph of the little guy that was lost hmm. in the <laughs> in there. So there we have... All of our sketchy stuff is done. I like the way that finishes that. So let's talk about lettering. Uh, what is the fix if you accidentally smear the uniball pen? Oh, take a Q-tip, a little bit of water, wipe it right off. There you go. And then just make sure your surface is dry before you try again. Easy peasy. Love how you did the eyes, bunny eyes. I like how they're inset. <laughs> yeah, I think they're kind of cute. So, lettering. I am going to work with a number two rigger. Uh, for those of you that have never used one, it is not a liner. <laughs> Although, it looks like one, but it isn't. Uh, the bristles are arranged in a rigger so that they form a chisel edge like a flat brush. It makes it ideal for doing this type of lettering. <laughs> and to thin my paint, I'm using a little bit of Josonia's Fast Dry Glaze. And I'm using the yep. warm white. Deb Antonix here. Hey, the coffee kicked in. Coffee kicked in. <laughs> hey, Deb, if you get a minute, pop uh, the link up to your uh, Artful Webinar um, stamp and doodle that you got coming up. Stamp and doodle. She's got this really cute design for this thing for uh, artful webinars so i'm going to use a little bit of thin warm white and we're going to start press down 
till it opens up and fills the space. Just hold it still there. I am going to zoom right in. Now you tap the brush so that it's flat, so that you have a nice little chisel edge. And then stand it on the chisel edge, press down till it fills the space, and then come back up onto the chisel edge. You missed the conversation about snakes, Deb. Yep. She's probably quite happy about that. Yep. See, I, I'm not allowed near Deb. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tattoo of a snake on my arm. And Deb doesn't do snakes. And Deb don't do snakes. <laughs> nah, I'm pretty sure she'd be fine with that. But if it was a well, living you snake... long sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> She's awake. Holy smokes, look at the quality of the zoom. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Well, we we did spin the mini and got good cameras. <laughs> <laughs> And good software. And good software, so. Uh, Deb did an awesome job on Wednesday. It's available on, in replay. Nice. Yeah. What'd you do on Wednesday, Deb? She did her art for webinar. Oh, yeah. She got another one coming up? I think she got another one coming up sometime. Yeah? Yeah. I love it when she does those stampin' doodles. The stampin' doodles? Yep. Stampin' doodles. Well, she does some, like, just the cutest designs. Ah, snakes are harmless. Especially the ones we got up here. Yeah, we've got just little ribbon snakes here. They're not a big deal. There's only one, one poisonous snake in Canada. And I say poisonous. Meaning, if you eat it, you die. Well, we have rattlesnakes in Canada, southern Ontario, and the Sandy Lands, Manitoba. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, That's a venomous snake. Yeah. But the, we have a poisonous snake in Canada. It's one well, of the few poisonous ones. You don't, you, it's not really a snake. It's more... It's kind of like an unfinished newt. <laughs> unfinished newt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it falls in the salamander newt category. Oh. Oh, the ones that freaked your dad out that day. But doesn't have any legs. Okay. Oh, I know the ones you mean. Those are creepy. Yeah. They're poisonous. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't yeah. want to even touch them. Yeah. They, they, like, your skin will absorb the poison. Yeah. <laughs> well, here in the fall, we have those very pretty uh, caterpillars, and they're poisonous. They're we just... have copperheads and rattlesnakes. Yeah, we don't get that. Yeah. And water Copper... moccasins. If you got copperheads and rattlesnakes, you've got water moccasins. Yeah. They see they they live in the same climate. So I've got all my vertical stuff done. And you can see putting this, um, putting that shadow in first makes big difference to how this lettering is going to stand up on this background. So I've got all my big stuff done. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to grab my favorite liner brush, which is this one, either a 15 aught or a 10 aught. This is a Dynasty Micron. Either size will work for this. It's an extra long detail liner. I love these. No bugs, no snakes, no spiders. And this is where I connect everything. Just simply because I could use my other rigger. I have a, a zero and I also have a 10 aught. I could use that to connect them, but I thought I'll use my liner this time around. Oh, we have 
Massasauga Rattlers in Northern Ontario. Yes, you no. do. Uh, oh, they're not poisonous. They're venomous. Yeah. Poisonous. If it if you eat it and you die, it's poisonous. If, and if it tries to eat you and you die, it's venomous. <laughs> So I'm just using that 10 aught to connect all of those little areas together. And it looks pretty ragged right now because I still have a lot of graphite lines showing and whatnot, but we'll clean those up after the fact. Ask Tracy about my trip to Florida. <laughs> Did you have fun with the geckos? <laughs> I had fun with the geckos. <laughs> geckos are cool. Yeah. I, I had we were walking across a field going to a restaurant and um I had flip flops on and all of a sudden I stopped because I had a hitchhiker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really hope I still have that picture. I have a picture of a gecko um who made its home in the side of inside of a rose the bulb of the oh, rose yes yeah it's an mm -hmm. awesome picture i hope i still have it that one has made the rounds oh it doesn't look like i still uh, nope don't think so <laughs> There's that gun I wanted to get, Dad. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Show that to Deb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is for Deb. Deb will appreciate this. Uh, this, <laughs> Ms. Deb, this is the gun that Renee wanted to get, Chuck. <laughs> Deb will find this amusing. <laughs> it's a unicorn. It's a unicorn. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly finish out this lettering. Once you erase all these graphite lines, it cleans it up quite nicely. But this is... Almost there. And then we're going to talk about some stroke work. Um, stroke work with an angled shader. So, here we go. Oops, I missed a spot. Right here. Oh my goodness. You all right there? Yeah, just whoopsied. Oopsied? Ah, whoopsied. That's quite the gun. <laughs> yeah, that's quite the gun. Yeah. My husband is accustomed to bigger guns. <laughs> <laughs> it can go with the little stuffy unicorn. Yes, it can. Years ago, Deb gave my husband a little unicorn as a gift. And um, it's kind of parlayed into this ongoing. It's a thing. Thing. <laughs> anyway, my husband has more unicorn stuff than <laughs> he has. A, I don't think he has the stapler, but he's got. There's a bunch of stuff he's got. And it's all unicorns sitting on his desk. I never thought I'd see a cute gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, if there's a gun out there. Somebody will make it cute. I, I can guarantee you somebody either made it cute or fashionable yep. or bedazzled it. Yep. It's Gucci. <laughs> yeah. A Gucci gun. They Gucci'd their gun. Okay. So we're going to talk about um, stroke work. Now, the border around this um, sign here is done with a, what I call a very simple vine. Um, and it sounds simple, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but if you don't know how to do it, okay, I, it's not I'm that gonna... simple. So we're going to use an abbreviated S stroke to do these leaves. Bunny and leaves? Not bunny leaves, just leaves, leaves. No, I'm just going to do this. Transform, hit the screen, boom. Okay. So we're going to use, I'm using a 3 8 angled shader. Um, I chose 3 8 simply because nice small. You can use a quarter inch if you want to, or even a half inch if you want bigger leaves. But whichever brush you're comfortable with. And I've got a brush full of water, and I'm going to dip into the paint. And then I'm going to blend it back and forth so that I get a, thin it out a little bit. So now I have a brush full of paint. Now, this is an abbreviated S-stroke. S-stroke with an angled shader would look like this. So it's essentially creating an S. So S-stroke, like that. You're going to shorten that stroke to look like that. It's going to form a diamond. So stand it on its chisel edge at a 45 degree angle, pull down, press down, and stand it up. When you get a little practice with it, you can do it like this so that it just forms these little leaves. That is an S-stroke leaf. So our leaves on this. Now there is, in the line drawing, you'll see that I drew a little vine in. It's much easier to do this freehand than it is to trace it out. Although, if you want to trace it out and paint them in, please feel free to do so. It's not going to be a big deal. So I'm going to start with the end of my vine, which is going to be about halfway, and I'm going to put a single leaf. That's my starting point. And then I'm going to alternate back and forth like this all the way across. And I'm going to put about a half an inch between each of those leaves, roughly. And when I start running out of paint, I'll go back and I'll pick some up. Now, I'm not going straight into the corner. I'm going to curve around the corner a little bit, which means I'm going to tuck a couple of leaves in this way. And you make sure you've got lots of paint, lots of water in that brush. You don't really want these to be fully opaque. And then as you come down in here, those leaves are going to kind of blend into all of that shading that you put in there. And then you're going to come back to the center on the other side, and you're going to do this and alternate back and forth. All the way across and again you're going to don't come straight into the corner you're going to come around a little bit so that it bends and comes down so it rounds out the corner a little bit now I skipped over this section here we'll fill that in it as we go the wrong mouse <laughs> trying to zoom in with the wrong mouse and I stopped my vine right about that horizon line or the tape top of the table yeah, they, can you do one more sure I mean there's nothing to stop you if you want to continue this leafy border all the way around the bottom please feel free to do it so I can zoom in there, there we go now, if you want to, and I do mean if you want to, you could switch to a smaller angled shader, pick up some green, and you can toss in a few little smaller leaves if you want to. Depends on how busy you want that, that border to be. But don't be afraid to, you know, tuck a few little leaves in 
little smaller leaves here and there. So I've got all these little leaves in here. It looks fairly, um, fairly solid. Doesn't look too, too bad. So now I'm going to switch to my 10 knot liner and I'm going to thin out. Just give me a second. I gotta zoom out so you can see what's going on on the palette. There you go. So I'm going to thin out that same green so that I can get it to work on the on the um, on the liner. It needs to flow off that liner quite nicely. And we're going to start connecting all of these leaves. Now the nice part is because we are working tone on tone, we don't have to worry too much about being them being perfect. So this is how I connect them. I do not putz with this too, too much. So from the center, I connect the leaf and then I just pull the line, the, that line out and let the paint run out. So they connect, but then when you get into this corner, those lines will eventually all connect anyway, visually or otherwise. And then you can do this. Wherever you think you need one, you can put in little curly cues. So when you see the line drawing for this little guy, you'll notice that I think I might have it here someplace. There it is. Oh, of course, I don't have that line drawing. Uh, <laughs> the um, I tend to take that line and connect them this way where I overlap them a little bit and then just draw a loose vine through them like so and visually they become connected whether they're really connected or not so it creates a nice little loose vine nothing too elaborate so So I keep it really loose. These leaves are not strongly painted. They're not heavily detailed. So you don't have to really worry about whether or not they actually connect. So if you look here, this one does not actually connect. And that's okay because I can do this. I can put a little curly cue in somewhere and then I can do that. The line drawing has whiskers, but the picture doesn't. Not yet. We'll put the whiskers in. I always like to leave something till the very end. Was that deliberate? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. There's just little finishing things I like doing and... So there is our leaves. And of course, you make it look so easy. <laughs> it's just practice. So she's been doing this a while. Those little, you see, I just drawing a little line through there. Neatness doesn't count. That little line just implies that they're connected, even if they're not. Can canvas set be hung outside like a flag? Yeah, if you put an exterior varnish on it, absolutely. Like rock lawn can? Yep. Yep. Put yep. Use varnish. a good quality exterior varnish on it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. So we're going to do the final little finishing. One of my favorite things. Everybody knows I'm going to do this anyway. Fugly brush. Spackle. And a little bit of water or glaze and some thinned warm white. And I'm going to just lightly spatter this. I don't want to have a ton of it on here, but 
I just like how it softens things. That's just a me thing. Especially for these cute projects. I just like how it looks. The whiskers. And then we're going to put the whiskers on. Two ways you can do these whiskers. You can do it with your uh, liner brush or you can do it with your uniball. Now, on this little guy, I used the uniball. But I think for this one, we're going to use the liner. And I'm just going to thin out a little bit of lamp black. Just a drop. I don't need much. Blue. Well, I'm going to drop. <laughs> a big drop. It's a big drop, but that's okay. And I'm going to thin that out. Now, with the uniball, I made his whiskers a little ragged and, and curly. But with the liner, I think I'm going to make his whiskers a little more bunny-like. So I've put three little dots on either side of his face. And then I'm just going to stroke in three whiskers on each side. Nope, can't see that. Oops, there we go. Sorry. I keep forgetting I'm working on fabric. I can bend it. There we go. There. So he's got cute little whiskers. And now I want to take this tape off. Uh -oh. There we go. Good grief. So. Oh, my stars and girders. So there we go. I'm going to take the tape off. Removing the tape, fold it back on itself, 45 degree angle. Keep it low. If you pull straight up, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to pull that fresh paint off or you're going to damage your fabric. So. There we go. So keep it low. Anytime you're working on um, a surface that's using painter's tape. Keep it at a 45 degree angle and keep it low to the surface. Just reduces the surface tension on the piece. And then you don't run as much of a risk. It's not perfect, but it's not as much of a risk to the freshly painted surface. So what I will do after I'm done with this is the edge of the canvas finished? Uh, it is not. Um, I'm going to finish that. So, I, yeah, I have a fairly raw edge on this canvas. So I'm just going to take a little care. Removing that tape. Et voila. Bob's your uncle. Sally's your aunt. Now, to finish this, to finish these, these edges, um, I will flip it over so that they, that line right there. So I will fold it over like a hem and then I'll finish those edges. Um, glue them down. I'm going to use a, a tacky glue for that. Um, this one here, it's a quick dry, Aileen's original. I'll glue it down. It'll get weighted so that it's pressed and that I have a nice seam and then I will hit both back and front with a good quality varnish. But before that, I will spray this side with um, matte medium or matte spray just to seal in that ink before I hit it with a varnish. And the other thing I will do is go around with my Factus Black Eraser and clean up all of those uh, little bits of graphite line that are still there so that I get a nice clean finish on my lettering. And I don't have any of that dark and ugly stuff showing I like my fact is black did you make the whiskers come out on the dots yes I did so that would be the extent of my finishing for this little guy as I said this is the line that I will fold it back on is the edge of where that tape is um, the other thing you could do if you don't want to actually glue down and, and have a heavier edge on it, I would just take some of the base color, finish off that rough edge, and then uh, a gold paint pen to finish off around this. 
and then again seal everything with a nice coat of matte spray and then finish it off with my favorite varnish my favorite of all time is decorarts uh, soft touch or decorarts matte varnish ultra matte varnish those are my favorites for all sorts of things because they're dura clear varnish they're good for indoors and out <laughs> It is a Factus Black eraser. Yes, these are from General Pencil. Absolutely awesome eraser. It's great for um, dark backgrounds in particular because it doesn't leave shiny spots on the paint. So there you go. There is our happy Easter bunny. Yay! Switching camera. This little guy was a lot of fun. And he's not that difficult to paint. He's, he's an easy one to paint. But, yep, I think it's cute. Just couldn't bring myself to paint another one of these boards. <laughs> I think four is enough for one week. <laughs> so, yes, Deb, I'll send you one. You, you already claimed it. So, um, did you draw our final name? No, not yet. So, he's going to do that. I am going to... There's the wheel. <laughs> he's going to load it up. Yeah, we've got a... Nice little um, brayer and a stencil and, a stencil and some other goodies. He's got cute little paw prints. And yeah, that cute little paw print stencil. It is cute. Uh, wrong mouse. There we go. <laughs> what is with you and that mouse? Well, I got two of them. I got a laptop over here. I got a <laughs> desktop computer over here. <laughs> I got my phone. Just to make sure that your the YouTube. Is wow, there. that wheel is really full 229 wow let's spin it awesome to us so previous winners were burn burner yep and sally kleber kleber yep and jackie gibson jackie gibson is our newest one see you ladies and don't forget february 28th if you paint the bunny do something fun with it Yay. or this color the bunny stuff. stamp the bunny whatever you want to do um don't forget to post it and tag me in your post on the tracy moreau live page and uh we want to see some weird bunnies we, we, <laughs> we want to see some really creative bunnies how's that and then creative um, right yeah right. creative bunnies that's the best word and um Boom. and yeah and then we'll take all of those names, everybody that posts, we'll put them onto the wheel, and uh, the winner will get a set of those Tombow markers. Tombow markers. Yeah, it's a nice little set. It's a 10-piece uh, set. Yeah. 10 colors. And they're double-ended. That's what's cool about those markers. They're double-ended, so. Oh. Yeah. Are they kind of like the... Oh, there's the... Oh, you don't have them out anymore. Oh, the ones that are in there? Once in the black case, <gasps> kick the camera. <laughs> yep, we the big, yeah, they're on the other side. No, those are Copics. Those are Copics. Yeah, the ones down there, right down one, down, down shelf, down shelf, corner black case. There you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, they're nice pens i have a whole set of them they're really really nice i got what i don't know there's maybe 122 of them in that set it's uh but yeah we've got a nice little set of 10 to give away they're nice, nice. they're probably i think they retail for like 35 dollars yeah. so you can do the bunny in whatever media you want whatever surface you want yep just have some fun the, with it i want to see a, a zombie <laughs> it's a zombie yeah I don't do zombies. I want to see a zombie bunny. He wants to see a zombie bunny. <laughs> well, it'd be neat. I in the next cool. in the next week or so, I'll have another bunny for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So you have till the twenty eighth of February. Yep, to, to paint, paint it the, and post it. Paint it, post it, and tag, tag me in it. Tag her in it. We want to see this bunny in. <laughs> different colors different textures different styles it'll be fun i'll be yeah. really excited to see what all we yeah. what they come up with all right guys that is it for us this week thanks so much for joining us as you do every saturday we really appreciate it and if you're watching us on youtube don't forget to hit the subscribe button that helps us out a great deal um to my members 
keep an eye on that uh, membership download section because there's some stuff coming up there for you. <laughs> and uh, if you're not a member, come and join us. We have a lot of fun. Jessica just sent you a $2 sticker. Oh, <laughs> what is it? Uh, it just, it, it's, just a wavy thing. It's a wavy thing. Hi, Jessica. Me. <laughs> me. Pick me. Pick you. Yeah. Um, that's going to go to the SPCA. Yep. All donations, anything like that that comes through our super chat on our YouTube channel, uh, it is all directed towards our local SPCA. Sad it's over. <laughs> It'll be fun next week. Mixed media. Don't forget, we're going to be using those brayers. We're going to be using some fluid acrylic. We're going to be using some stamps and some stencils. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I promise you that. It always is. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for us this weekend. Thanks so much. Uh, we appreciate you coming to watch us every week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so that it lets you know whenever we post new video. Keep your eyes peeled. We're going to have some video up for you this week. There will be a new freebie up this week. She said. She said. <laughs> All right, guys, you guys have a safe and wonderful weekend. Mwah. Love you. Stay safe. Adios.